Hello, and welcome to TPK Roleplay. Tonight, we continue our stories of rotating one-shots, the Emerald Expeditions, where our adventurers are working with the Emerald Enclave to deal with problems throughout the realm. This evening's adventure is based on my own thoughts and notes, created by me. <laughs> I am Tony, your Dungeon Master for this evening. Players, please give an intro for yourselves in overlay order, starting with Lucalog. I am Lucalock, and I am playing Flail, the uh, elf uh, phantom rogue. That goes down to me. Hello, everyone. I'm Copper Leo. I'll be playing Rick Charlemagne, gentleman adventurer. Hey, everybody. I'm Turk, or Turk Accented, on Twitch and Twitter, and I'll be playing Orsoid, your dragonborn sorcerer. Wait, no, he's not dragonborn anymore. Your tiefling. Dragon's Blood Sorcerer, uh, and General Misnomer, over to Dev. Hey y'all, it's Dev Develops. I'm playing the Spring Eladrin Moran, who is also a Shadow Sorcerer. Ooh. On to the wonderful Mr. Rogers. Hey, I'm Mr. Rogers. I'm playing Puck, our half-dragon fighter. Tossing it over to Heck. Hey everybody, that's me, Sir Hegwatt. You know, um, tonight I am playing Nim Perlantisil, the sea elf zoologist, and taking it back to our lovely GM. Oh, hey, that's me. All right, got to turn off the cool James now. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, it's been about a month since our last little adventure. What's everyone been uh, up to since y'all ran into some individuals? Flail's mostly been just haunting around in corners and, and and dark patches of the hideout. Occasionally parts of the forest. Well, if we're not going in order, uh, Orsoid's been very busy with a number of important quests and questions, primarily figuring out how best to get a banana exactly where Tess is going to step. Uh, just so he could slip on it. Uh, but beyond that, uh, general uh, goofy drawings, if anyone falls asleep, they wake up with mustaches of fine quality on their faces. Uh, but, you know, just hanging out, flapping about, or side things. Uh, Though, the, I should note, the other stranger that's entered, uh, Rudy, has been... Uh, sitting at the desk with his hat down low. Looking very mysterious, very serious. Uh, Puck would have been having hard and terrible times down in Chult. Just bad times all around in dinosaur country. Um, Rick and Moran were tasked by Tess to do some research on the elemental lanterns that were used by the um, cult of Elemental Evil back at the Fane, and they were just trying to uncover some, you know, some stuff about it. They learned just things about how they can operate as ritual vessels, batteries, conduits, and um, used for bindings or releasing of certain things. Uh, much to learn, much to learn. Which... And very... Go ahead. <laughs> okay, and it would probably make more sense if you work together, okay. so you go ahead. Uh, after that, Rick decided to go back to the towns, start schmoozing the rich folk, you know, talking about the Emerald Enclave and their conservation efforts, you know, working on getting some money flowing in, which he's holding on to at the moment, but. And uh, Nim was also tasked by a test to do some research. Um, and his is specifically on uh, the cult of the El Elder Elemental Eye. Um, since we've seen the symbol, but don't really know much about it. Um, so just throughout downtime, um, he's probably just been pouring over just a bunch of tomes. Looks very sleep deprived. Um, there are so many like different things on the desk that for a second, um, you might not see him until he pops back up over the table. Um, 
and has probably once or twice had a uh, mustache drawn on his face uh, by falling asleep in the archives. Also, all the notebooks get built into pyramids. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> and he steals like one of your, well, like a fancy looking pen. I mean, it disappears mysteriously. Oh yeah. <laughs> First a mysterious stranger, now a mysterious disappearing pen. What's next? How, yeah, how dare you? Do you realize how like scientists have an emotional support pen? How dare you do that? <laughs> yes, he has noticed. Um, so after a time, you, you guys have seen Tess um, over the last like couple days packing. Um, they have like, and you're seeing them right now, they're kind of pouring over a notebook. Um, they have a big duffel bag strapped to their back um as they're kind of sitting there reading real quick and you will see a bird um kind of flit its way over to them um you see it chirp but you don't hear anything uh and they just stand up abruptly just like dropping their notebook um he's like uh yeah if ever uh, <laughs> um hey if everybody could uh, get over here now be great. <clears throat> yep. Um, so there has been an incident. I am not 100% on details, but you all need to go right now. I am sending you out to an outskirts of Monastery, and uh, I have to go somewhere else, unfortunately, because I do, just do not have the time. Uh, I trust you all can deal. Yeah, yeah. Like you can see, they're they're worried. Um, they're trying to hide it with a, you know, faux smile. Yeah. Are there any specific details about what's going on? <laughs> I, I wish. Um, no, sadly enough. Um, and they're gonna like kind of tap on the tree as the portal starts to grow. Um, you're gonna have to prove your mental aptitude before you get in. In. Um, I hope you all can answer just a couple of quick questions, but don't worry, Van's not a hard ass. And um, as that portal finally hits to the top, you will see that Tess um, has gone into a bird form and starts shoop leaving. All right. Not so much for that. Well, well he's never been much for a goodbye, is he? Has he? That person I've never met before until now. Who are you? <laughs> ah, well, it's funny. You, you should ask. Uh, my name is... Uh, can I actually avoid this other uh, my, uh, my name is uh, Rudy Rutitut Hia. You might have heard of me. I'm a famous cow doy. I deal in cow ways and sheep ways and uh, chicken ways. I don't think I've heard of a cow doy. I've heard of a cow way. Steps through. <laughs> exactly. It's like... The Rudy, thank you. We're we're absolutely going to be saved today. <laughs> Let's go. Good to hear. Uh, good, good to hear. I'll be appreciated in my time. The more the merrier. I always say. Good. That's good. That's a good thing to say. I think I'll say it now. It's my thing. It's what a cow doy does. Now I can make finger guns at him. I'll go through the portal. All right. <laughs> As you all go through, you end up in a quiet, open area in a deep forest. Nothing but trees surround this area, and a large pond sits in the middle, its depth fathomless. Sitting on a rock is a large avian-like creature. As you approach, it stands, looking towards you all. Was giving me some Stolas vibes. Yes. Oh, I was thinking more like Journey vibes, but yeah. Ooh, it's yeah. a burb. <clears throat> Hello, you must be those few they called for. However, to gain entry, you must answer my riddles. I can I ask why? After all, why? we're here to help. Well, of course, in order to... Uh, Enter, you must prove yourself. Not just anyone can just come through. Anyone can claim they are from this organization. 
Can I make a persuasion check? <laughs> you can try. That's a 24 to say, look, friend, we were sent here by Tess. And, you know, it sounded like there was a dire emergency. Do you, are you sure we really have time for riddles at this point? Well, I can cut you some slack. I can give you a few less questions. But there is, a, this is my duty after all. Ah, well, I understand. And I'll, I thank you for your kindness in this matter. Don't... By the way, my name is Van Kastanrakshak. Gesundheit. A pleasure to meet your acquaintances. May I have your names? Wait, wait, I've heard this one before. Not unless you give them back. Oh, very tricky. It's good to see caution around people of my kind. I'm a cowdoy. <laughs> Cowdoys are always cautious, especially when it comes to tricksy wordplay. Uh, Rick's going to lean over to Turk and, or Puck and say, Ah, I didn't know that Dragonborn were affiliated with Burbs. Hmm. He is actually a tiefling now. He's got little oh, yeah. horns. So, are you mentally prepared for your questions? Uh, by all means, go on ahead. I am green with envy when I am placed below the sky. I do not breathe the air you breathe, but I never wonder why. If you go and shelter me, I simply shrink and die. The answer to this riddle is simply, who am I? I'm gonna take a guess. It's not... Van Ka... I don't say that out to the answer, of course. <laughs> In the sky, it's green, but... A tree? It's as close enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> That's a plant, of course. A tree's a plant. That'll give you that one. The next um, one. What kind of room can you never enter? Tess's room. A mushroom. Oh, clever. And you'll notice as you say that, um, the, the world around you starts to change a little bit. The pond becomes mushrooms growing out. My god, the fathomlessly deep pond became mushrooms. <laughs> Who would have thunk? Born by fire, stone, or rain, I feel most comfortable at home on the plains. When I am out of my element, I feel much disarray. What am I? Could you repeat the question? Uh, no, nobody go looking at me just because of my cowdoy. I'm not a plains cowdoy, more of a coast Born cowdoy. by fire, stone or rain, I feel most comfortable at home on the plains. When I am out of my elements, I feel much disarray. What am I? Would like to buy a vowel. Oh, good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's... Can we phone a friend? Maybe 50-50 yeah. poll the audience. <laughs> mm. And Vanka will kind of like look around, uh, not seeing any form of like audience that you speak of. Don't worry, I got this. I'm gonna go see if I can go talk to a tree and convince it to give me an answer. Uh, I'm just trying to think the connection between something that can be started by fire, or rock, or rain. Are you an elemental? You are right. Oh come on, he was he was working his way. I say motion into the tree. The trees take a long time to talk. It's not fair. <laughs> they can. You're right. <clears throat> Flying on invisible wings, I am massive in size. 
Then, if my master commands, I am as small as he wishes. All men wish to own me, but when I touch them, they cannot touch me. I cry when I am with my brothers. Darkness follows wherever I go. I'm a friend. I'm an enemy. I am freedom. What am I? A cloud. You got it again. He's so smart. Have you ever considered being a cowboy? No, there's not enough money in it. Ah, that's true. It's a <laughs> thankless profession. An untiring servant it is, carrying loads across muddy earth. But one thing that cannot be forced is a return to the place of its birth. Just be glad I asked him to skip a couple questions. <laughs> this could, if you wish to use one of your skeeps. Oh, we, oh, we have oh. some skips. <laughs> Could you before, say it one before more time? we use it. Yeah, one more time. An untiring servant it is, carrying loads across muddy earth. But one thing that cannot be forced is a return to the place of its birth. Is it rain? See, it has to do with water. That makes sense to me. Um, I'm gonna guess. Is it a Could river? Be. Yeah. It is a river. It's on the little small rocks vibe. Well, the river's like. The river's the serpent. That feels yeah, like, up. Uh, feels you a little carry. exploitive, doesn't it? And that's it? why it can never go back. Red? Well, it's black when you buy it, red when you use it, and white when you throw it away. The reverse of a of tissue paper. I feel like I heard I, one similar to this. I almost the want to say bloody penguin. Well, I I almost want to say charcoal. You're right. I think it's the best points for bloody penguin. <laughs> mm, I do not think it should be a bloody penguin. I think that would be victoriously, completely... victoriously bloody penguin. Because it, it would be red all over. It would not just be white. It would still be black. Well... But I digress. Runs in the woods, swims in the seas, flies in the skies, and lives in the trees, beneath the ground or in the cave. Hunts at night or during the day, found alone or together, usually feral, but may have a tether. I feel like the answer might be a predator, but you know. Lael is going to flop so. down on the forest floor and just start doing, like, brass angels. Just staring at the clouds. Okay, could you repeat it? it? Runs in the woods, swims in the seas, flies in the skies, and lives in the trees. Beneath the ground or within a cave, hunts at night or during the day. Found alone or together, usually feral, but may have a tether. Give it a good feeling. You should know the answer to something because you spent a long enough time talking to other people. And it doesn't make sense. We do have a skip if we need to use it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. This is one I don't think. Yeah, like I said, my only thing I can think of is Predator, but that's too broad. Like, my, my, I want to say Shadow, but I don't think that's right. 
If you'd like to use your skip. Yeah, I think that's the one we gotta skip. Mm -hmm. I don't know it at all. Like, I can't even. And this should be our final one. Almighty will bender, body mender, life ender. Tremendous hidden power, foes cower in their final hour. Grand dealer of tricks, hands quick, eyes transfixed. Conjurer beyond the true, coursing through, empowering you. What is it? Blood? As long as it's on a penguin, maybe. <laughs> Magic? There it is! Lael's Magic. just like yelling things out from the <laughs> ground. And with that, you will see the world around you change once more. Before you, the land shifts into a sigil, humming with energy. Aha, uh -huh, you've done it. Congratulations. You may now visit the monastery. Please watch your step. Thank you for the riddles, Vanka. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what exactly was the emergency we were called for? Oh, I am not told much information. Just a guardian of the passage. Ah, I see. Passing Vanka in, in Sylvan. It's always riddles, huh? Well, they have many ways with words twists, bends. And with that, you will... Go into... A mess. Oh my gosh, it's the music. You arrive a, <laughs> as a large stone <laughs> sit in the middle of the area, etched with runes. Surrounding it are five large, upright carved stones. Beyond is a cobblestone bridge leading to a monastery. As you enter this area, you are surrounded by a large forest. Near you is a glowing stone. Um, beyond, the heavy rain obscures your vision. However, you can make out a large shadow in the distance. Presumably the monastery. Uh, the cobblestone bridge is slick with rain and water draining from the edges to the ground. Perhaps we should do a quick survey of the area before we go to the monastery itself. I don't think we have enough time to ask all the planes across their opinion. Um, quickly, uh, Mummy. Oh, please. A uh, question for the DM. Can we tell yes. what language the runes are written in? Um, from what you can tell, not actually a language. They are just magical um, runes for teleportation, from what anyone with arcana proficiency could tell. Movie next to Flail. In the rain? Is it like really loud rain, or is it just like, you know, just heavy rain? It's heavy rain, like it is. You can hear thunder claps everywhere. Um, they come like rumbling on um, the light the sky above you flashes now and then it's extremely dark hmm. um, there's some wind it's not awful right now but it's like sometimes it picks up and it feels just like needles smacking you in the face with rain flail it's nice to meet you um i've heard so much about you if you can see me, I'm right here next to you. Lale will just look over, and the rain is just washing away so much dirt that it's just running down their face like like a pound of mascara. Hi. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, 
Well, or so it walks right across the bridge. Okay, and you and your uh, shoes kind of squelch in the uh, that's being created from the heavy downpour. Mm-hmm. Um, before you is a wondrous sight, an elegantly carved stone monastery with vines and creepers growing on its outside, blossoming. A path leads off to the north, down a slope into the hill, roughly 40 feet down. But a not so wondrous sight before you is a body succumbed to rigor mortis. It lays solidly, uh, red water staining the area around it, its clothes completely soaked. The most notable part of its clothing is a large opening in the back, the fibers completely missing, and the skin beneath charred, pierced, and slashed. Where on the map is the body? Up here. Well, it looks very similar to what we're probably going to be looking for out here. Yeah, definitely not right. Um, I'm going to just quickly look at the side. You all manage the body. Best to take a look about before we enter. Now, sure. I'm not sure if you've heard of the cow doy ways, but we could split up into teams of two. Yeah. Kind of looks like we already did. Can you speak louder? <laughs> we're not far. Oh, I thought I thought you were Moran. Are you far now? You two want to take the the north way, pointing to Tutti Fruity and them. Now, <laughs> excuse me. My name is is uh, Rudy Rudy Ru Rudy Tutti Fresh and Fruity. Yeah. Rudy Rudy Tutti Toot here, and you'll say it in full. <laughs> That's Mister Rudy Rudy Tutti Toot here to you. Uh, no. Oh, uh, it hurts my head. <laughs> it's just blocking. Um, Moran, Flail, as you two are kind of going that area of the outskirts, you'll notice that this building starts to have large stained glass windows here. How high does it go up, presumably? like um, You would assume that... So this area seems to go almost higher than two other parts. One seems to lead up to... Beyond what you can see due to the darkness with the storm. You can kind of make out like the shadow of two towers here. Uh, one to the southern end, one to the more northern end. Um, here though, it goes about 40, 50 feet up. And these stained glass windows are massive and immaculate. They're probably at least 20 feet at their highest point. Do they depict anything? Um, from what you can tell, it seems to have um, it looks like trees like going like the root system going down above a semicircle and the trunk going up and then branching out into leaves at the top hmm quickly draw that while it's raining, it just like starts to. Flail is gonna lean in really close to your face, like over your shoulder while you're doing that. <laughs> what are you drawing? The symbol. Not too, not too slowly now, and then put it back in. Master Puck, if you could uh, watch the area for me, I need about ten minutes to ask our dear departed friend here a few questions. Sure. I'll keep an eye out for whatever did this. And I am going to cast Speak with Dead. Okay. Could you link this? I'll have to look it up. Uh, basically, I give it Symbolins of Life and Intelligence. Uh, lasts for 10 minutes. Uh, spell fails if the corpse was the target of the spell within the last 10 days, which I doubt it was. Um, until the spell ends, you can ask the corpse up to five questions. The corpse knows only what it knew in life. Uh, answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive, and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if you're hostile to it or recognizes you as an enemy. Okay. Uh, 
and then doesn't comprehend anything after it died, but can speculate about it. Uh, so Rick will cast a spell, and basically the corpse will, the, its eyes and mouth kind of glow a little bit with like a dull, pale green, as it kind of makes a almost breathing sound, but no motion. And Rick will say, Oh, pardon me, dear friend. Can I ask, what killed you? It, it begins to kind of look at its surroundings, even though it can't understand that aspect. What's killed me were those that I brought here. What did you bring here? I brought the people that threaten my own. Can I ask why you brought them? <laughs> I could, I would, it could just be a butthole, but I'm not going to be like, yes, you can. Next question. <laughs> Um, <laughs> is this guy a butthole <laughs> <laughs> they they threatened my family my friends everyone I knew they knew them all they knew where they lived Do you know why they wanted you to bring them here? They never told me. I didn't ask for fear. If you had to wager a guess based on what you know of this place, what do you think would be a likely target they would be after? Below in the crypts. And that's that is your five. Yeah, I was <laughs> the follow-up question would be, can you elaborate? <laughs> but at this point, as he basically says, below in the crypts, like little ghastly voice comes out, and the little pale light just kind of breathes out of him as he returns back to a corpse. What does this side, the bottom, south, the south side, look like? So it still seems to appear to be the same, um, almost church-like structure. And then over here, you can start seeing a more clear what looks like a tower. It does um. It does have like a little side door that it comes up to. Um, this tower is massive. Um. Well, Flail, I see. Well, there is the. Looking back here, there is. We could walk the perimeter, but then there is also the door in front of us, and then there's, um, oh, I think that's a dead end, never mind. Um, but I, we should not go in without the others, so do you think we should go back or walk the perimeter? Well, it's raining, so it's a good time for sneaking. There's usually a stage entrance around the side, but I haven't seen one. So we should go back to the main entrance. Okay, we'll let them know. Oh, on my way, or should I? I mean, who needs to enter E, Yeah. You, know, you just really look like somebody I know. Your your face is just very familiar. I, I I don't know why. I have one of those faces where people say that to me a whole bunch. It's just kind of rude when you think about it. Because, like, I'm my own person, completely independent of all other peoples I've ever met. Sure. You should be confident in whoever you choose to be. Absolutely. I'm very confident in everyone I choose to be, and I currently choose to be uh, Sir Rudy Rudy Tutia. Um. Esquire, the third. 
Friends, uh, what did you glean from the body? Well, from what he told me, apparently he was forced, probably by our elemental friends, to come here and bring bring them here or threaten his family. Hmm. Apparently they might be after something in the crypts of this monastery. I, that's interesting. We, we found actually, um, there's a tower facing south, um, very large, and there's an entrance there. Um, we didn't check if the door was, you know, locked or anything, but there's a door on the south side facing the tower. Um, I, yeah, that's what we gleaned so far before I'm deciding to come back to you all. Do you say crypts? Yeah, scripts. Oh, well, there's Orsoid. a path down here we haven't really looked at yet. Oh yeah, Orsoid and Nem, as you two are kind of going down this um, path, there are stones to kind of give you a little bit better footing. They're a little slick. At times, you nearly lose your footing. Um, it's fairly steep. Um, as you come down, you see what looks like areas have been used um, for growing some sort of vegetation beyond the actual woods of the forest. Um, but right at the outskirts, I mean, it's very thick woods. Um, you can't really make out anything beyond that, especially with the storm going on. If it gets too slick, he'll just start floating in the air. Um, friends, would it be worth, uh, would it be worth checking the perimeter and seeing if there are other entrances besides this main one in the side? Possibly something where um, our tiefling friend has gone? Or do you think the front is perhaps the easiest? I don't know if this body in front of the door says anything. They've probably cleared a way to get there already. Uh, so right more than likely, in. they probably proceeded in through here. But then again, following after, they might have left a few people to watch guard. If that's the case, um... Mister, um, I guess it's time for a vote which way we're going. So as we all the, gravitate towards the front, I, I think this is the so. Way. So there's a tower. There's a tower to the south, and then what was to the north? There was like another tower, from what you could tell from the shadows, based on the lightning strikes and all that jazz. Well, everyone should know as a card doing my vote counts for six. Because I can float. Well, let's even, I say let's examine the northern one since we're already meandering that way. At least take a From look. My, by the way, there was a door right here by the body. I, it's I know. not great with the dynamic lighting. Yeah, because I, I, I mentioned that they probably went through there and said that they might have a guard there, which is why we're potentially looking at a different entrance. DM. Yes. I don't suppose there's any sort of thieves camp anywhere around? Any sort of markings that I could pick up on? Um, none that you found yet. Hey. Okay. I'm gonna just then keep an eye out for those. <laughs> well, uh, I feel as though we're getting close to the end of the perimeter. From what I saw in the back, it just leads straight up. There might be something actually in the the, the eastern front. Um, but if caution is on our side, then I definitely think as of now, until we see what else is on the eastern front, the southern door is probably the best bet. Thank you. 
One door is as good as any, I feel. One door, two door. Red well, one door. We're thing gonna door. <laughs> go around and explore how big this place is. Look on that. We can't test oh this thing. <laughs> oh, right, what's this over here? Test nope. is pretty urgent, so who's to know what, uh, you know, what time is it in of the essence? Yeah, like, are there any windows to look through walking you see around this perimeter? You see some. Um, they're not all um, at, like, face level. They're more just, like, those very short long rectangular windows like one could like prop open well, they're, they're just, you know for you to look through and more to allow light in there's um there's this door now east south west entering puck's gonna make an executive decision and just go through this door Seems good. That is not a door. It's oh. not a door. It's you not. It's, it's just a door a if you try hard enough. Can we look? Can we look for a secret door? <laughs> can they look for a secret door? This is like a back uh, alley, then. In that it's case, um, south is probably <laughs> best. Mm -hmm. What? What is this then, Tony? Is this area? <laughs> um, this seems to. You can see here. There's also a large window. Uh, stained glass depicts the whole tree that um, Flail and uh, Marat, Moran found earlier. Can you describe what the tree looks like again? So at the bottom of the stained glass, it's a semicircle with the roots of the tree kind of starting to crawl over it. And then the main center is the tree's trunk. Nearing the top, it just branches off into, you know, a tree's top. As an archaeologist, does that bring to mind any, the symbology behind it? Is that f familiar? Can you give me a religion check at advantage? Not religion. You're an archaeologist. You it, I mean, it's religion? stained glass. It's not <laughs> likely a religious thing right now. Thirteen. Um, you know that this is definitely stuff um, probably dedicated to the major gods that typically druids or enclavians will be tied to. Uh, like Myleki, Sylvanas, Shantaea, um, Eldath. Several gods that kind of envelop the entirety of nature itself. It's definitely... A sanctuary, despite the pun. Puck, Puck uh, do you question. think you could stand still instead of zipping around? Is it? it feels I can't like tell if this is part of the. Something. I can't tell if this is part of the wall or if there's a gap here where I'm at. Uh, that's just me drawing very shitty with okay. the dynamic lighting. <laughs> because I started getting real tired doing seventy thousand maps with this. Um. Flail, are you good with doors? Um, not like good with them. I'm great with doors. Uh, like they're very unfriendly. Uh, <laughs> but if you and Puck want to, but I do have thieves' tools. I trust to see if you know if they probably messed with them. Um, gotta be too careful. No, I've never messed with doors. It's dangerous work. <laughs> they know too much. True. Traps are just the abjuration magic of those who do not practice it. Um. <laughs> abjuration magic is just a fancy word you say when you want to sound smart. Some people would say that. I do, because I'm a cowboy. Um, in, so in front of you is a very nice double door set, by the by. Iron handles, expertly crafted. Uh, Flail is not checking if the door is just going to open and absolutely just going to start picking at the lock. Um, so you start picking at the lock and as you just like even go to start setting the lock picks in, the door just starts to swing open. 
so expertly did you unlock this door and immediately did you just open the start to open the door damn she is good <laughs> i'll step in if if i oh if yes I, I should probably turn the uh, door into open damn, let let me me in. In. Oh, yeah. i thought the door opened it's a oh, delusion yeah. The way we're all jumbled up feels like we're all like it's oh, like sco that is gonna be it thing. comes to another door, oh but in God. here you can get a reprieve from the storm and the rain and the muck. Um, there's plenty of like areas to like hang your coats, uh, actual areas to like um, if you've ever seen um, brush uh, brushes to like kind of get the muck and stuff off of your boots. Those are here. Um, there seems to be an unlit candelabra as well. Let's tidy you up, everyone, now and start pressing there, the there are no windows in this room. There is just a puddle of dripping mud and whatever else. It's unclear rain dripping off of me. Mr. Fluid. <laughs> just clean people up. I don't know if you can see my art but like, oh, yeah. I look like oh, yeah. the the kid from Peanuts that's always got the clouds <laughs> around. Pig pen. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, pig pen. Isn't it his name, Pig Pen or something? But yeah. It's not the full art, but yeah, it's like that. Um. <laughs> Cat not included. <laughs> Derelict. <laughs> All right, one more. Can I light the candelabra? You sure can, if you'd like. Uh, I do have the uh, ever-glowing torch from the last dungeon. If you would like that, sir. I mean, yeah. It'll light these, so. I don't need to hold on to it, though. Just need to borrow it for a second. All right. I'm going to light the candelabra, though, Tony, because... Yeah. You do. Yay. Um, so we'll come to life and say, be our guest. I can exactly be. can sing, can it dance? Ah, uh, yeah, I can do that whole thing, but we're not doing it because you didn't yeah, cast animated objects. So I, I don't refuse know. to do it. I heard that only happens in France, where that is. Anywhere can be France if you don't care enough. Hmm. This, this sounds, sounds like someone like trying Quebec. to. It sounds like someone trying to do an accent for a whole thing, would say. <laughs> so what would you like to do? Well, Flair, you did so good in the last door. Do you think you can do well on this one? Do you think you get that door to vouch for you on this one? And I'll pull the door closed and just like softly pat it. It's a good door. Yeah, I'll try it with this one. Okay. No two are the same, though. I don't think they talk to each other, either. Oh, rude doors, you hate that. Yeah. So you attempt to lockpick this door as well? Okay. And again, you are such an expert at this. Uh, as soon as your lockpicking tools go inside, the door starts to creak open. A large Don't push it open. Oh, yep. Ta -da. <laughs> a large, elegant marble altar dominates the western portion of this chapel. An offering bowl before it filled with various plants. The statue behind resembles a humanoid wearing clothes of bark and leaves, wielding a warhammer. Emblazoned with the symbol of a leaf. The pillars nearby are carved with symbols of unicorns, cornucopias, and waterfalls. Several rows of pews in here are made of a dark oak wood, but seem alive. Their legs pierce through the stone beneath them. All of the candles here are at varying degrees of use. Some half melted, others new. Near the center is a large 10-foot square podium with a large tome atop it, a mark holding a place within. The ceiling above depicts different portions 
flora, fauna, and geography. Anywhere from the tundra containing polar bears to the mountains and their storms to the tranquil plains. A large, and you guys, um, there is a large set of double doors to the east, as well as two closed sarcophagi. Yeah, one appears to be moved. Um, Mem would like to check that out. That is just part of the map. Please continue. Oh. Okay, never mind. Like you told us in previous oh, sessions. I can, I'll just, I'll just I check cannot out the alter sarcoph- these. I'll, just, I'll check out the two sarcophagi anyway. Um, they seem to be made out of a single piece of stone, from what you can tell. Um, it doesn't really appear to have any kind of carving, or any kind of emblazonings, or any kind of etchings. No names, no words. Uh, no additional symbology, um, and yeah. Was that tome here or on the on the on the podium? Mm-hmm. Um, I want. What's here? What's 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 just like that this? is an offering bowl sitting on the altar. What's in it? Various plants and vines. Let's go look at that tomb. Tome. The tomb. Hmm. I'm over at the tomb, kind of. <laughs> you turn around, or she's gonna go. Ah, <laughs> they find it didn't scare you. The tome. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Uh, it appear. You read Sylvan, correct? Mm-hmm. From what you can tell, the tome of the podium uh, it seems to be a religious text of Sylvanus. The name of the wind walk. I out loud for those who don't. I'll translate out loud and comment to those who don't speak Sylvan. Next to it is a lovely pair of silken gloves. And a note that says, "Do not read this in common." <laughs> when I get that feeling, I got gloves of healing. Ooh. Ooh. Some gloves, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> They're really pretty. I like that art. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't require it too many either. Well, I do have healing spells. <laughs> like, I have healing, but it's not really spells. So. We, don't know, we don't know what they do though yet. Yeah. They look nice. They do look nice. Um, but... I'm just saying, Rick is always looking for a nice pair of gloves. <laughs> uh, was the a tome just left? It was just left at its. Was it closed? It was left at that certain. It's ex- closed. Oh. Have you guys found anything? Uh, Many um, semblance of disruption move, you know, movement uh, in the sense of things altered. Uh, can we make a perception or investigation check? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, any scuff marks, any signs of struggle or sure. forced entry at all? Okay. Yeah. I'll Choose one I'll or the other. That. I'll do I the extra do work of looking at for scuff marks on the ceiling. 24 on my perception. Okay. Uh, 21 investigation. Okay. Uh, I got a 21 perception for anything suspicious on the ceiling. <laughs> so, or so, do you notice that um, really if, too, too if you take the time, every known beast on Faerun is within the mural on the ceiling. Hmm. I do what I, I assume would be the equivalent of the Pokemon rap that Tessa taught me for every... Yes, of course. Um, how did it go again? Owlbear, Grappler. <laughs> Owlbear, Grappler, Flail... Uh, I don't remember all the monsters from Pit D&D. You just gotta look through the waifu catalog. Anyway, um... <laughs> There's a dull right Confirmed, so a clip it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, 
Uh, Nim and Rick, you notice, like, kind of looking around, it's weirdly suspicious that there's a dead guy. Nothing seems to be out of, like, place. Um, until you kind of get closer to the altar, you notice that there's scuff marks on an otherwise spotless floor. Should they push this? Uh, I'm gonna check the altar to see if there's any, like, secret switches or anything like that. I throw, uh, before you do that, I throw, um, these crystal lensed glasses over to you. Um, these will help a bit. Um, and their lens glasses, my, you know, minute scene, whatever. So you can just, you don't have to attune. You just use them when you want to inspect something closely to get advantage on your investigation. Okay. Which I'm glad you gave me because that, that would have been bad. Uh, I rolled two twos. All right, P. Give up to someone else. Um, so you kind of like look around and you're like, you, you're honestly just not finding anything out of place with the altar. You're having a very difficult time. I swear it's like I lost my keys again. <laughs> my glasses. I can't see anything with my glasses. I, I can't see anything <laughs> with they're, my glasses. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. They're goggles. He's got better vision without them. It's like when people take you like, I, I just hand him. I just see? hand it back and I say, these goggles do nothing. The yes. goggles do nothing. nothing. You're supposed to get a distance of one foot. You are too far away. <laughs> when your friend hands you their prescription goggles. Oh they're my for God. Actually, though. They're for everyone. They're like the, those movie glasses, those 3D movie glasses where you just pop the lens out. I know well, I'll use them. I mean, if uh, Rick didn't Someone really like see anything, I feel like Nim would just like start like pushing things, like pulling parts of the altar, seeing if any of them move. Um. So on this altar as well is obviously um, looks like a very elegant silken cloth beneath the offering bowl flanked on the sides are two bouquets of plants. You can tell they're actually still alive. They're not fully cut. Um, and there's also two unlit candelabras. Um, they all seem to be able to be moved. The plants can only move so far without you tearing them out of their spots. I'll light, up, I'll light them up. Both of them. Yes. Cloth for Dimitridon, Fate Fish, Hedrosaurus, Um, you can see now much more clearly with light this statue. It seems to be. It is marble, but it does seem to have colorations to it. The bark is actually brown. The leaves and plant portions of their armor seems to be green and orange. Their skin's almost like a teal color. Um, and their Warhammer seems to be made of a material that isn't metal. And on the front of their Warhammer is the emblazoned leaf. Um, Buck's gonna go into his backpack, into his poisoner kit, and pull out some herbs and other things and set them in the offering plate. Hey, okay. Jack, couldn't lie. This is a giant, this is a giant center. Let's see if that Mammoth does anything. <laughs> Offer him a mushroom or something like that. Yeah. Here Octopus you one. go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Avocado, thanks. So you do add it in and you see uh, everyone give me a perception check, please. That is based on sight. Uh, would blind sight. Ooh, look at these rolls. It actually would not. Oh my god. We're two killing nat, it. Two nat 20s. I got a 14. A Nasrus. Oh, okay. Scorpion. Seahorse. Nim. Rudy Rudy Tuhiya. And Moran. 
you notice that there was a slight glow behind, like tracing the symbol that's emblazoned on the warhammer of the statue after Puck put in a mushroom. I see offerings are encouraged. He's just going to be on that for a while. No, I, I, I finished. I got them all. <laughs> well, well, you guys okay, get I... your offerings. I'm going to go around and light all the other candelabras. Yeah, this is like, I I think Nim would follow suit and um, uh, call uh, uh, his uh, magical um, East companion friend over. Um, he, uh, Meldo is a uh, lizard right now. Forgot to mention that, um, and uh, I will just uh, I like rope across and uh, get a scale of some kind, just a smaller one that was looser, and just place it on. And again, you saw before that same symbol kind of lights up again. Moran has nothing on them in their inventory um, related to these items, but they'll pick. One of those fey flowers that grow out of their hair and place it in the bowl. Um, it does not light up to you. I figured, but it was sometimes it's the act that matters. And the intent. Whichever is the right saying. Perhaps if we take a look around, we might be able to find something that more fits for this offering. I want to go to the tower. Um, that's just me. There's also this door up here. Up north, yes, where the man near where the man was. This, this would potentially lead us back to the front door. Perhaps we should sneak in and take a look. Sure. All right. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to roll a stealth check to open the door. Twelve. Yeah, you open the door. You believe you're stealthy. Uh, it opens up into a garden. No. This quaint open garden has a large oak tree sitting at its center. A few crops are noticeably root vegetables and tubers, some leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, and tomatoes. Obviously not enough to feed a large amount of people. The food grown here would be a noticeable amount to offset having to completely forage. Um, there is a deep well with a bucket and pulley system that sit in the south. I want to look at the well. And by look at, I mean float down a little bit. Um, it goes down quite a ways. I will say the annoying D&D thing. Uh, I have some dark vision. Uh, and I will, of course, uh, remain in communique. Uh, whoever's passing by, I suppose, uh, Nim or somebody. Um, just, hey, I'm going to go down this well really quick. All right? And before you could voice any concern, just <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Oh my gosh!" Are you like, are you just falling down? No, 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 no. He's gonna float. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm floating right now. I'm chilling. I'm being very, very, very cool, like sitting cross-legged, You're... making myself small, and just looking. They will float are down there. Floating. Mm-hmm. They'll float okay. too. Um, is there a point where you? Uh, I'm just gonna let you know. This is a very deep well. I'm not going to get too far down. If it starts looking like it's really far down, I'd say about like It's 50. at least 300 feet. Yeah, if, if I, once I hit like the 60 foot point where I'm like, oh, that's pretty far away from the light, I'm going to like, this feels hey. like group activity. Uh, and Is there a stone cover for the well? There is not. Oh, shame. 
I <laughs> I pop back out and make a dramatic pose. And... It's Puck pulls the tree out and shoves it down. Cowdoy <laughs> um, can read your mind. I'd like to open Cow this Cowdoy knows you're looking at my butt. So this is the one where there is no actual door there. Cool. Is there a door where I'm at? Yes. Uh, I would like to st stealthily open this door. You can always try. With a 19. And it opens. There are seven beds in this chamber, all of which appear slept in but well made. Beneath each is a folded set of clothes. To the south, a nearby tree has been constructed. You can smell the light scent of pine and lemons from it. Because that's how a pine saw, baby. Yes. Let's open this one. If, it's, if it is. All right. So while Nim and Rick are chilling in the bedroom. Doing what guys do. Yeah. Just checking it out. <laughs> Two bros chilling in the flail. bedroom. Investigating crimes because oh. they are. So you. truth or dare? Find a <laughs> kitchen. Within a pot on a burner simmers, o simmers over embers. The scent carrying throughout the room and out of the door as you open it. Within freshly baked bread sits on the counter, still warm to the touch, and half cut carrots and other vegetables align the counter, the scraps being collected into a bag. A few dishes sit in a wash tub soaking. Well, it does seem that we actually were here just in the nick of time. Picking up some of the bread and just... Oh, oh it's some good stuff. It's some whole grain... Some bomb-ass bread. Whole grain, gluten-free. <laughs> no, not gluten-free, extra gluten. Free. It's gluten-free bread. <laughs> we can actually take some of that for the offering table later. Garbage. <laughs> gluten-free. Uh, I'm going to take the um little collection of the scraps like the cuttings and the carrot peels and stuff like that okay and just hold on to it for now whales like trail mix scraps <laughs> um is there a cherry he loves scraps is there a door what? here or just there is a door there there's a door there and there what about the lower one yes as in, yeah, Did something. we ask yep. what, if anything, these symbols on the floor are, north, south, east, and west of the walkway? Yeah. They are Western? just fancy mosaics. Okay. I just wasn't sure. They are part of the map, just like that sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I no attention to the map. <laughs> so, Rick and Nim, while you two are chilling in a bedroom, what are you doing? Uh, I'm searching around, seeing if there's anything of interest, you know, because um, I'm going to assume, looking at these beds, it looks like there's at least several people that stay here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we've, like... only, we've only seen one body. Yeah, yeah only me, one um... body, and also, like, maybe keys to places. Investigation yeah. or perception check. Okay. That's a 22 on perception. As you're looking around, you find that there's a loose tile in the back of the room underneath the rug. Inside, you find what looks like a folded up cloak. Uh, I'll pull it out, kind of unfurl it a little bit, see if there's uh, any as... symbol on it. As you unfurl it, uh, a piece of papyrus falls out from between it, and it looks like this. Ooh. The Great Owl's Shroud. Um... Moran and Flail, while you were in the kitchen, there was a note. Oh. On a crate. Let's go read that. Let's say we grabbed it. Okay. It and since you read Sylvan, it says, Look. 
That's all it. That's all it says. <laughs> Rule one: No farting. Um. <laughs> Look. I would, I would, uh, <laughs> That's a community Leo. joke. Lael, do you speak Sylvan? No. It says. Check my character sheet. <laughs> Uh, I speak Elvish, but not Sylvan. Uh, says, no. It says look, but that's all it says. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna look around, and then I'm gonna actually walk back to the thing and look up at this creepy, weird, weeping angel above the thing at its eyes. It's the weeping angel that is something. <laughs> that is um, above the altar. I share the note also with everybody. Like, I'll come out and say, I found a note that says, look. Yeah. What does the papyrus say on the, that I found with the cloak? What languages do you know, Rick? That's a good question and deserves an answer. Um, Elvish Draconic. Okay. Sometimes common. Um, so Flail, as you're looking up at this statue, can you give me a religion check? You look and you you seem to understand better. This symbol starts to kind of glow in tandem with you. You know that this is a direct statue representation of Sylvanas himself. Uh, I am going to take the bag of compost and put it in the offering bowl. You do that. While you're doing that, Puck and... Rudy Rudy Toot Hia, what are you two doing? Rudy Rudy Toot Hia oh, is I... doing what all cowboys do and is sitting up on top of that tree, gargoyling and waiting for someone to need his assistance. Uh, okay. Is the bucket actually there, like the bucket and rope? Yeah. The well? I, I'd lower that down. As he's doing that. Yeah, there's, there's at least 500 feet of rope here to do that. So, why do you have dragon ears? Why do you have horns? Oh, because I'm a tiefling. Why do you have dragon ears? I'm a half you... dragon. Only in your ears? Yeah. Seems a very silly way. Like only my ears as he motions to the horns and scales on his forehead? Yeah. Yeah, it's like... Really only like an eighth dragon when you get down to skin coverage. Unless you have scales elsewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that rude? I liked you better when you were a dragonborn. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're referring to. The flail. Through this vision of seeing Sylvanas, you're going to see robed figures, which you're going to make the assumption are probably priests to some degree, which seem to do something with the altar, which then leads to the next vision as you see them descend a spiral staircase which leads to another vision of you seeing them offer something to a secondary altar underground. And then the vision stops. I'm ready to open the door on the right. Am I able to read that note or no? You are not able to read that note. In that case, I'm going to come back out. <laughs> okay, okay. It's like, can, can I take a look at it? Yeah, oh, yeah, so I found a note, like, but unfortunately I can't read it. It's all a bunch of jibber jabber. What languages does Mr. Nin know? Um, okay, so common, aquan, undercommon, draconic, elvish, and sylvan. Um, so you're seeing part of the note, 
You're only understanding bits and pieces. To your understanding, you would need to know f- almost full primordial to know what this note was to say. If you're uh, you're like, you're getting like hits of words, you're getting like done. Yeah. What mm-hmm. may? Ron, I'm. You're gonna be standing there, and I'm just gonna be right next to the side of your face. All of a sudden, just I'm gonna just whisper to you, uh, what I just saw in the other room. Oh. 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 Oh my. Uh. I. You should. You should share that with friends. I am. Uh, yes. You. You are. Uh. Everybody. It's come to my attention that Flail has actually had a a vision of I don't even know and just kind of like recollects what they like a game of telephone what they believe Flail just told them and gives it back out. It was under the altar, right? Dan. I'm sorry. Oh, so yeah, you say you you assume that they did something to the altar because as soon as they start messing with the altar, your vision flashed into them walking down a spiral staircase, which then led to another flash of them at an underground altar. The scuff marks. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find anything in the in the rooms? Sorry. I found a note, but unfortunately, Master Nim and I can't read it. Uh, Perhaps Moron, you might be able to. I can read part of it. it. It sounds really strange. I can read bits and pieces. This is this is what we speak back home. Um, it was written in a weird dialect. It I says, mean, badger, badger, badger. <laughs> snake, snake, snake. I, I speak quite a few languages. Let me actually take a look myself, see if I can okay. decipher the other unintelligible half. I, I could sp- also take a look. I wouldn't do anything, but I could take a look at it. <laughs> um... Moran, you, you kind of take your attention away from the door you just opened with the sudden, hey, let me whisper in your ear. <laughs> um, and you're able to read this note in its entirety. Soon they will be here. I have done as they have asked. I hope that they can forgive me for what I have done, but I had no choice. May Sylvanas have mercy. I translate in common. Why would it be written in two dialects? Probably to hide hide the fact. It sounds like a, the note was written by a dear friend outside. I mean, perhaps, uh, but um, before we go back to the altar, let, let me just quick, let's quickly just survey this room really fast. This room holds several barrels. Each is labeled if they hold water, wine, ale, or other various liquids. It's noticeably colder in here, and by glancing at the walls, you notice runes etched into them, glowing softly. Uh. A crate to the south has been opened, filled with bottles, one of which lies empty on the floor. Hmm. Refrigeration unit. Um... If, do, do the bottles have markings in the sense of like, are they labeled like wine, ale? Yeah, it's filled with bottles of fine liqueurs ranging from whiskeys, rums, vodkas, and gins. Each of them is worth 10 gold and there are 19 of them. And I... at the bottom, you can notice that there is a piece of parchment beneath protective, around protective straw. I will call out to Puck and say, You'd like what I found, and uh, but also but going primarily for the note. The note in Sylvan reads, "Behind." Another note says, "Behind." Look, look behind. Also, was there a door here where I'm at, or is that another? There is a door there. Okay, I'll check this door out as well. By the way, Puck, very expensive drinks there in the back. You'd probably want to collect a few on your way out. He's so, right now, he's just like reeling up that 500 foot rope. 
I... Just, just to make you raise an eyebrow for later. <laughs> yeah. I take He's like, I'm taking out. this rope with me. As everyone is calling out, look behind. I take a peek to see if Puck has a tail. You could try. He's not uh, look behind. I look at his behind. Does he have a tail? Does Puck have a tail? People want to know. Does he have a yeah. visible The tail. rumor come out. <laughs> is it does, like, does is it like a little nub tail? tail? <laughs> like a bobcat? Oh my god. It's a nub. Uh, it's, not, it's not a nub tail. No. Rick, within this room is a very quiet, calming atmosphere. The scent of paper and ink wafts through the air, along with hints of the rain and earth. A large writing and reading desk sits in the south, a stool before it and a chair nearby. A small table nearby holds a few scrolls and an inkwell with a quill. I'm sorry. A candelabra stands unlit, candles half burned. Sorry, raven-like writing desks aside, uh, did you say it's not a stub tail, implying there is a tail? Can I get quick closure on this event? I, I have answered the question. That is not my answer. <laughs> I, any other questions, I will direct you to my lawyer. I would love to meet your lawyer. He might know if you have a tail. Uh, I represent my client, Mr. Puck. Does he have a tail? Uh, my client does not have to answer the question. He does. I'm looking at his You butt. have to file uh, public information. I'll file a perception check if I have to. I, I will take you to court for sexual harassment. Ooh. As creepos Testing on the street like will tell you, looking at a crime. <laughs> I mean, pulling open somebody's pants is to look that way. I'm not looking. Anyway, at the point, your obfuscation you being as it is, there is a writing room. I, You have no proof of that. I am a cow doy. <laughs> Looking around, um, you notice that all of the books on the shelves are meticulously categorized alphabetically, first by author, then title. What is potentially um, what's on the desk? What is what was last being read? Um, is there anything? You know, just things that pop out of interest in a room that is so meticulously organized. I'm gonna roll Give a me an check. investigation check. <laughs> well, I got an eight, so someone else can do better. <laughs> I don't know about I, that. I, like, he's looking around, but then he's just looking at the cloak like, why is it an owl? <laughs> it seems so weird. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Flail, maybe you can pick up something. I'm kind of... I'm gonna, look at, I'm gonna two, two folks on the text on the desk. And if this cape's an owl, why is it recharged at dawn and not at night? Hmm, who knows? <laughs> who knows indeed? Flail, you notice, looking around with your special eyes, <laughs> there is specifically one upside-down book in the entirety of all the shelves in here. I won't even say anything, I'll just go over and pull on it. Moran, on the desk, um, you notice that with, uh, this is basically a way to translate Sylvan. Oh, it's a primer. It, in the event, none of us spoke Sylvan. <laughs> well, luckily, we we have a few Sylvan friends. On out us. of your book flail is a note sticking out of it. What's the book called? Let me open my big, fat <laughs> book. Like, like I have a whole thing for these stupid book names. My big, long, fat glossary. This, this book is. This thesaurus is throbbing. It's so big. Uh, gross. Okay. Um, that was <laughs> this. I'm sorry. This book what kind is of book titled, is this? This book is titled "Druid Crafting Flowers for Algern." Algernon. Yep, Algernon. That's a word. Sure. Sad. Okay. <laughs> yep, Druid Crafting I'm Flowers. I'm going to put that back now. That's a sad book. And I'm going to take out the note. <laughs> the note is in Sylvan. Uh, again, Ron's going to find me just right next to just like. Staring at a piece of paper. Normally they. just going to hold it up in front of both of our faces. Normally they would probably get like. But after the previous occurrence, it's like more of a. <laughs> like, 
no jumping this time, but I do, you do catch my breath. And I just like, <laughs> squint the corner of the eye, like what is it <laughs> say? It says, the Turn. Oh, it really just says the. Mm-hmm. Um, coming outside, holding the note. The, look behind <laughs> the. Look behind the what? Um, so, Puck, you've been, like, putting this poor bucket down 500 feet. It finally hits something. Like, watery feeling, or is it, like, solid ground? At first, it kind of feels like, uh, water. Is it when I, I I'll reel it up a little bit? Does it feel heavier? Yeah. All right, I'll reel it up all the way. I'll take I'll, I'll assist at this point and just instead of like having to reel, I'll grab the rope and just fly up. Um. Okay, you're gonna be flying up really high. Yeah. Um. You are. You may feet. turn into a lightning rod. Uh. Because oh it's starring. Um. You will become taller than some of the tallest trees here where you are. Um, God wouldn't take... end the funnest game of my life. <laughs> it will take some time. Um, yeah, it will take some time. Um, what is everyone doing while uh, Rudy is about to become um, basically the lightning-based Icarus? I... Uh, I'm going to backtrack and say I'm going to check the tower in the back of the altars if anybody wants to come with me. I would say let's be patient until we see what this well finds. I want to go to the tower too, though. Don't get me wrong. Uh, to be honest, since I haven't seen any bodies, my guess is if the attendants here uh, didn't make it safely out, they very well could have been tossed in the well. It's too much of a... I mean, who's to say? We got called at such a moment's notice. We found one dead person. The other, everything doesn't seem like it's in disarray. It's it's too odd. It's too quiet. Uh, we'll wait for the rope to pull up. Rudy, you get up and you're you're near probably four hundred feet in the air. Mm -hmm. Um this awesome. is a this this is a deep fucking well. Check and air traffic control. There this bucket is maybe a quarter full. And it looks, the water doesn't look what you like. You would expect well water to have, um, or look like, or even smell. In fact, it kind of smells weird to you. I me, mean, if you would like to discern the scent more descriptively, you can give me a nature check. I'm gonna assume I can't. Or survival. Numbers. I, I'm assuming everyone else can do this about me because I'm five, 400 feet up. I mean, if anyone wants to go up, just like huff a random bucket of random liquid. They are more we, than we happy waft. to do that. We walked. We walked. We always walked. I do the science. Like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a stagnant water connoisseur. It doesn't, it doesn't help it. <laughs> I roll a natural three. My no, it does not. Certified Nim. stinky yeah, air. Nam, you are used to water. You're not used to the, like random icky well water. The fuck? Yeah. Um, I'm too free. I'm to be fair, it is a guy thing to do. Be like, oh man, that smells awful. <laughs> man, smell this. You smell it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was oh, uh, Moran, you're you have been alive so long. You smell so many smells. Smells that would probably put people on their asses. This has a weird, earthy, fungi smell. Like, you've smelled what a mushroom smart farm would smell like, and that's what this smells like. And that's not normal for a well. I share the group. Definitely some growth down there. Not normal for um, structures that operate like a monastery where this is the primary source of refreshments uh so i certainly wanted to want to drink it no you wouldn't uh interesting um 
I, uh, we have to make our way down to the crypt somehow, so I, I don't doubt that we will find ourselves somewhere within that area anyways. Um, Let's keep it in mind and continue to explore and make, sh make sure. I would like to point uh, attention to the tower before we try anything with the altar. That's fair enough. Cover. They obviously left notes for us or for someone to find. Cover all ground before we go below ground. Um, so, so far, what have the notes said? Look behind the... Look behind... Oh, that's it. Uh, on a on a flight of whimsy, can I look behind the altar? Sure. Okay. I I need to see this flight of whimsy though. Yep. Too late. It's already already happened. Is there anything behind the altar? Give me. Actually, no. Yeah. Um, you find a very small, well hidden lever more of a switch than a lever, really. This is because I rolled a three. <laughs> yeah. Um, so something I needed to now fix, because I fucked up. But we can just do this now as Moran kind of comes back in and double checks the, um, <clears throat> the altar book. Not the altar, but the podium book. Going in the mark of the book, there's another small note that read Alter. Uh, well. I thought you only read the title, and that's my fault. No, it's okay. Well, we found our lever. I swear I wasn't there when I looked. It's okay, you were looking in the front. Uh, the, the, gla the goggles, it just really messed up my sight. Uh, so, if, if if they have the bucket in hand, I'll start flying down. Oh yeah, I brought the bucket with me. That rope's trailing in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, even though I see the lever, are we going to look at the tower? I, I would across the chop. I please. I would uh, like to just it, cover our bases. It would probably behoove us if there is any survivors here to find locate them. Okay. Uh, then yeah, let's do that. Also, Puck's gonna dump the what's in the bucket into the. <laughs> the um. Yeah. So, like, area. you do you do it carefully or no? Yes, I, I'm okay. going to fill it essentially. Um. Yeah, you fill it. It turns into like almost a a vegetation soup, mm -hmm. slurry. Um. It starts to kind of smell bad in here now. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you have the vegetable scraps. Uh, fungal water, um, a mushroom, um, a, a lock of hair. Uh, this is just mm, no. <laughs> it's soup. Um, you don't notice if the symbol of Sylvanas lights up though. All right. Um, oh. So Sorry. you tend to go towards, and a moran opens the door to a foyer, which has a staircase that leads south that goes up about 20 feet off of the ground. What's this? Oh, no, it's just candles. Yep, um, just an, an unlit candelabra. Light them up, just, just because. Just, just light them up. Yeah. As you get uh, to this area, Maran, this is a bell tower. This area has a large bell before you, and a large hammer hangs on the wall on a leather strap. A window to the east looks off to the wilderness, an endless forest. The stairs lead below to a door, which leads outside. The tallest portion of this tower is um, roughly 60 feet off the ground, the stairs descending. All right, well, good to know. At least that solved that. Should have known. Uh, monastery bell tower. Don't want to ring that. Don't want people to hear us. Uh, 
So while they're doing that, Puck's gonna go back to the garden and pick one of everything. <laughs> Just like, and then break off a branch from the tree and return back to. <laughs> Okay. This and just like start adding things to it. But as you one. add it, it starts to overflow and make a mess. Um, it's probably going to ruin the silk um, below it. And it's going to start like, running off onto the side to the altar. Start kind of like overflowing to the front. Messing up the rug. And spotless for... Uh, let's press it to take that away. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Master, Master Puck, I'm afraid this is a time to make stone soup. Is do you know if the lever is hard to pull? Have you? Um... Oh no, he he just turns back and he's like mixing it all with the twig. Uh, no. Oh, I uh, if you could pull the lever, Puck. <laughs> I'll pull the lever. <laughs> but I'll give Wrong you the inspiration lever. for it. Rick then falls to his death. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> By, gone forever. So <laughs> as you pull the lever, the there's like a slight rumbling as the altar slowly comes forward, revealing a staircase that leads down. How loud was that? Fairly. I mean, it's stone on stone mechanism. Well. And as you descend... We should take a quick break. We'll be back back in like five, ten minutes, everybody. Go get yourself a wet beverage. Enjoy your time. Um, I get a dry beverage? No, it's illegal. <laughs> Alcohol we'll, only. Yeah. We'll be right back. Welcome back for everyone who did not heed my warning and was told to stay. Um, <laughs> so. You all are descending a staircase. After a, a good minute, you start to be agitated. What the hell? Who made a gigantic ass staircase? Because it's at least 500 feet of staircase. Interesting. As deep as the well. Hmm. Weird, right? Anyway, uh, who made uh, these stairs? Just, just a coincidence. I'm gonna find the I'm guy sure. who made these stairs you and push him down the stairs. Smell, smell that smells smelly. <laughs> so you all arrive at the bottom, and it's already lit. There are two small braziers that have small flames sitting in them. As you descend, for what feels like. So many feet. There are these two flames burning on either side of the altar. With, the with their light, there is no feel of warmth. And their wax, or there is no wax. Never mind. I was going to say. Uh... There are a few herbs and roots that sit atop this altar, as well as a femur of a creature. In the corners of this dark room are four sarcophagi depicting great priests and priestesses. The southeastern sarcophagus appears moved, a cool breeze of damp earth and rock coming from near the wall. Nim, what type of femur does this belong to? Let me take a look. You're a uh, zoologist? Do I'm, I know? I'm playing with the flames to see if they're You can actually give out. me... A nature or survival or medicine? All it's right. Fun, it's survival nature. Advantage. Oh, oh my god, why am I rolling so badly? Um, you barely know her. During Pride Month, that's an age. So you are able to discern this isn't an animal's femur. This is a humanoid femur. Scary. Whatever it is, not an animal question. Can I move the sarcophagus? With an athletics check, you could. 18. Yeah, you're able to move the sarcophagus. It's pretty heavy. Unlike the ones upstairs, these ones actually have some kind of etching on them. Etchings, you say? And what do they yep. say? 
What do you read? Girl, you know I read all of the lyrics. <laughs> what do you see with your elven eyes? Abyssal, Celestial, Common, Draconic, Dwarvish, Elvish, Primordial, Sylvan. Not Gnomish? <gasps> the bottom right sarcophagus is written in Gnomish. Would I know the script at least to be able to point out that that's the language and be like, does anybody read this? You can give me a advantage. I mean, yeah, I would say you're old enough. Like, you've seen the script, you know it's Gnomish, but you don't know how to read it. I offer that to the party. Gnomish? Uh... No, my name's I don't Rudy. I don't speak Gnomish, but I might have a way to get around it. <clears throat> I was hoping we could avoid using magics for such simple things, but sadly, even language can evade most people. Jim, we're down in a crypt, right? Yes. Uh... Can I just... Speaking to no one in my party, just say, could I get a little help here? And, um... Is there any way I could use my Whispers of the Dead? What does it do? Where I literally ask any uh, surrounding ghost to help me <laughs> with what Okay, I so... Flail, you're going to say this. Everyone else can be like, or however they would like to react. You, Flail, are going to see almost four nearly intangible um, beings kind of appear. The south right one oh, seems to great. be of a gnomish woman. The north east seems to be of a halfling male. The northwest seems to be of an elven male. And the southwest seems to be a human female. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look around at those. Good. Uh could you help with this? What do you need help? Like the and the gnomish woman will look to you and what do you need help with, dear? Uh well specifically Right now, uh, the the reading this from the gnomish, I don't think any of us speak it. And she'll kind of like float over to you and be like, right up by you, reading. Oh, well, that's my name. Well, what's your name? Oh, please, I did not even think to. <laughs> it reads, High Priestess. Sudwivil Lahakis. I will I will repeat that out loud right after so that everyone uh, can hear me say it lawlessly. Um Oh, great. Uh great. Thank, thanks. Thanks so much. You're Solid. welcome. Uh, everything you have, you have okay? a good rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that says. It's her name. She's a high priestess. Oh. Ah, you speak gnomish. No, no, but I spoke to her. You know, I just spoke to the dead man upstairs, so I can't. I can't judge. Yeah. Well, um, it's good does anybody's Nim? Uh, if you speak. If anyone speaks Elvish, you can read the top left. Common is the bottom left. Um, halfling would be the top right. Don't speak Halfling. Um, yeah, um, don't hit Halfling. They have uh, Elvish. Uh, another high priest or priestess, um, we presume. Yeah, there were four of them. Probably all their names. So, Puck, you're able to move it? He was able to move the sarcophagus, yes. So, and you said there was, like, wind coming out from that, right? Um, kind of like from the southern corner. So, yeah. after moving it out of the way, is that, like, movable, whatever's down there? You would assume so. Because you're not feeling wind coming from anywhere else. All right, I'll try to move it. What is your strength score? 18. Okay. 
It takes a lot, almost all your effort to move part of this wall. But you do. See, sure. walls are doors. <laughs> what other door? <laughs> A a secret, secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. So, secret tunnel. Oh my god, it's so dark. This ah. does lead to another tunnel. Please ignore this wall because this was another <laughs> part of the map that I cannot control. It does not exist. It is just cave wall. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> that that's cave wall right there. Yep, it's yeah. super okay, duper I'm just cave wall. Sure super I was duper cave wall. Look, the right please, walk, please walk slowly so I can make sure that nothing. As you enter. <laughs> the sound of rain comes from above this cavern, which stands roughly 40 feet high. Bucket. With a hole near the southern portion. Water collects in a pool, a bucket with a rope attached nearby. Tunnels continue west and south, and in the northern portion, you hear the sound of whimpering with growling. As you look, you see four quadrupedal creatures covered in a yellow, pointy fungus. Uh, just look like fun guys. For, for a point of clarity, I do have that uh, on the torch that never goes out. Okay. Just for... Just so you yeah, because otherwise they would be in a gray fungus. Yes. Question. Do these yes. creatures look at all like the fungus kind of creature we saw in the very beginning? The first episode? No. Okay. But a good callback. They seem to be, unlike the first creature you saw, which actually appeared to be made completely of fungus, they seem to only have fungal growths. Hmm. As you come closer, they kind of cower back and they start, like, growling at you. Like, they're ready to defend themselves and they are afraid. I'll, I'll take a step back. Okay, um, I think Nim would take point at that point. Um, then and try to uh, use a class feature they have uh, that I am pulling up right now. Um, oh, I think I put this on my sheet already. Um, aha! Yes, tell me where it hurts. Um, okay. So yeah, you can cast speak with animals at will without spending a spell slot. Would just say we're we're not here to hurt you. Can can you tell me what's wrong? They do not appear to understand you, but you can tell that they have noticeable wounds. However, they're not bleeding. Not like a wound would. Hmm. I haven't really seen an affliction like this before. Oh, but something's definitely wrong. Well, we came down here for some answers, and I, for one, am going to get them. Uh, does any of them look like the the alpha of the group? Uh, no. <laughs> They do appear to be medium sized though. They are a very large creature in comparison to what you would have expected. And what you can find in this room um, are kind of like almost scraps of wood. All right. I'm gonna pick three of them. And I am going to use my universal speech. Okay. What it uh, do? They can magically understand me regardless of the languages I speak for the next hour. Okay. I'm going to start with a persuasion saying, uh, we mean you no harm, friends. We simply came down here looking for some potentially bad people. Uh, did you see someone and is there anything we can do to help with your affliction? And we're just gonna treat that role as a 10 because I can, so 19. They, the three that you have affected appear to be less aggressive or defensive, but 
they don't appear capable of speech. Okay. Um, they, the the fourth one will kind of, kind of key in on the three others, and kind of stop growling. But they do seem to cower. All right. Oh, uh, using continuing with the persuasion check that I rolled, I'll say. Look, we only want to help you. My friend, Mr. Nim over here, is very good at healing animals. Uh, perhaps we could take a look at you. If you just lay down and be calm, we can try to help. Give me... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, they don't seem to change what they're doing. I, at this point, um, will take just a little something like maybe like jerky or something out of my rations. Um, and I'm just a little bit closer and just, just offering it. Put it on the ground, kind of push it over towards them. Give me an animal handling check. Oh boy. Supposedly good at this. We're going to see. Been rolling so bad today. <laughs> Fourteen. Hold on. Um, do you do you want to use your inspiration to re-roll that? Oh, I can. Thank you. Nope. It was. Oh wait. I I, I could have been. I could have been sixteen, but I rolled again. Never mind. <laughs> do you do you want to try for a third time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Because <laughs> other players can give you inspiration. I mean, I could. All right, I'm gonna give you inspiration. Okay. And uh, I guess I'm gonna use bardic inspiration. <laughs> 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 yeah. You could phrase get it that. together, <laughs> man. Stack this. You get to you get to add a die eight to that. Ooh, d eight. Could have Very been nice. The last thing. Right. You Unless you roll high, then you can keep that inspiration um, in your pocket. No, we're gonna roll okay. that die eight. All right. Great. Okay. We ended with fifteen. <laughs> All of that for a fifteen. <clears throat> There's okay. so many. <laughs> it's what you need then, because this will hey. come up towards you, and kind of like smell at the jerky. Um questioning it, wondering if it should even bother. Um, and as it kind of scoops it up in its little um, maw, um, after a few moments, you'll notice that the wounds start to slowly mend to a point. There's still noticeable wounds, but they're lessened. Interesting. Okay, I've been spending this time trying to get a a sniff of the area, just like does it smell like an animal hole or like there's been bigger animals around here? I'm doing the full CSI sprawling my hand in the water and sniffing it thing, trying to be very Rudy, serious. You give me an appropriate check for what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, I'm gonna need maybe. you to make a tootie check. You know what? No, you know what? Give me a advantage perception based on scent. Would you like the <laughs> seven or the seven? Um, or sorry, what the fuck? <laughs> I I must have inspiration at some point. I, I certainly have made you. Uh, if you read my you start every game. rules. <laughs> I'll give it my all. No. Uh... <laughs> just like please not on this. Yeah. One, one of your lungs just collapses. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> oh oh yeah. Just put put my nose down to the ground. <laughs> just snort it. I yeah, that's that's poop. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on the ground anymore. <laughs> We're under the tree. <laughs> because I failed tree, so yeah. hard. Could I do a performance to make it look like I at least knew what I was doing? Where are those occultists at? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, so Rudy, you're not sure what it is specifically. Something here smells familiar. Uh. However, to everybody else, you're just like huffing dirt. 
I look convincing. I look like you I do. know what you I'm doing. You look like you know what you're doing. Like that whole like, like you grab some dirt and you just kind of. Yep, that's dirt. Drop uh, it to that the whole ground. Thing. See how it settles mm -hmm. in the. Yes. Put my ear. See if there's to the any wall. like actual wind like pushing the particles. Mm hmm There's wafts yeah. of the water again. Um. As this creature seems to take the jerky and feel better, it seems to kind of sit on its hindquarters in front of you, Nim. Okay. Um, and the others kind of start walking up, kind of sniffing. Yeah, at this point, um, you would probably just kind of like sit down, just crisscross applesauce, and... Um, just put his hand out towards, like, the top of the head of this animal. We'll see, it, see if it lets me. A real how to train your dragon moment. Um, because as you do, it lets you. Um, although it feels weird because this is pointy fungus. Uh, so it's not a great feeling. Okay. Um... um but... And just kind of like, yeah, we know there's some type of reflection going on. So I will spend five points from a, my a hit point, like pool thing that I have a, for healing um, to end a condition. Let me just put that on chat. I think I have it. Is it this one? I think it's that one. Yeah. Okay. You can neutralize a poison, um, or uh, there's a, yeah, there's just a bunch of stuff. So what are you doing? I mean, I feel like this is the only touch of magic like Nim actually has. Um, in terms of just kind of being able to gently clear away um, the fungus or whatever looks like it shouldn't be there um, and just kind of patch over things with the, if he has any natural salve or something, just kind of patching over the wounds that are around. Um, just generally trying to fix up this animal. As you go to cure its supposed affliction, nothing happens. This is a nat this appears to be a natural part of this creature. Hmm. As it starts to kind of like smell your hand for food, and the others kind of follow suit. Oh. And now we get to the uh, Jurassic Park Velociraptor's gonna die. <laughs> oh god. Clever <laughs> girl. It looks like they're just hungry, I guess. Um kind of looking closer at this. This is apparently they're normal. Interesting, wow. you know. But yeah, I'll just kinda give like whatever rations I have, I guess. Um, Equally amongst the, the four. <laughs> They, uh, they start eating, and you can all kind of notice as they eat, their wounds start to mend. Uh, since I can still speak with them, it looks like you've been damaged. Could you show us the way that the people who hurt you went? Um, they're going to look to you and they're going to kind of, um, kind of point with their snouts to the south, but they're not going to move. Fair enough. Can I, can I try to persuade them to join our cause? Knowing that they were attacked by these people, left for dead. Probably not. Okay. All right, well. 
Let's move forward then. Yep. Yeah, uh, Flail is just right there next to you. And having to move on. Question. Mm -hmm. you know, how deep is this water? Probably a good um, another at least 40 feet. Hmm. And it is follow-up question. Can I see the bottom of it or no? Probably not. Next time. All right, we'll move on. Next time. I won't dive in the water. <laughs> oh my god. Can't. <laughs> I know there are um, so many like water pools that we just never yeah. dive in on these. I mean, there's been a few that I've dived into. The um, what is that? I um, can see it in the distance. Yes, you probably can. Oh, by the way, this is the first one. <gasps> oh, they're so cute. Very prickly. The ones that you find now, Moran, are these little guys. Fungus. They can They cute. have scientific names. I'm so about this. Yes. Clytosine. Um. <laughs> Named these bloom. ones mush and that one oh. shroom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, there might be a... oh, I get why these caverns are so cramped. Because there's not a lot of mu there's not much room. Oh, oh bad is also... <laughs> um, uh... Oh no, yeah, he got banished, alright. <laughs> Except it's not one minute. It's Forever. It's forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will call out to Nim and describe what I see. Um, so in here, in the back of this chamber is a large pile of wood scraps, bark, chips, etc. The scent of damp, rotting wood slams into your nostrils. Among the pile, you see two half-buried creatures, large indigo-colored mushrooms sprouting from their back. As you enter, their faces poke out, and they shamble back, keeping their eyes on you. Do they also look injured? Um, it's hard to tell, because really all you see are the mushrooms on their back, as well as their faces. Best to leave them alone. They're not what we're looking for. Uh, as I take a step closer, do they continue to back up or? Yeah, they'll kind of like back up as far as they can in here. All right. Just so I know, is there stuff on the ground here anything or is that just? Uh, wood scraps. Okay. Rudy, what are you it. doing? I'm waiting to be unbanished. <laughs> <laughs> I I let go of concentration. <laughs> Holy shit, Flail. Uh, I'd just like to kind of just link up along the side of the, the cavern <laughs> and just go peek down here. Yep. If possible. You you sh Yeah, uh, you are one with the shadows right now. Like, I'm just, I'm not, like, doing anything other than just kind of peeking. As, uh, as you peek, you see, yep, two of these. Ooh. Oh, I love it. They're, uh, Great. they're, the mushrooms seem to look more large scales. I shall give a nod of approval that no one will see. <laughs> Um, and Flail, you hear like what sounds like something running around in the south. Uh, okay, just gonna continue, just, just kind of creeping up. Um, what is that? That's and you see. Oh my 
Oh my God. Um, what looks like three almost raptor-like creatures. You weren't kidding about the raptors earlier. Oh my god! Oh, oh cute. Ooh, so, okay. I love all of these so much. Um, yeah, if I see and, that, I'll just kind of <laughs> sidle back. And you see that they oh, seem to like no, almost we're... chase each other. Um, um, I will sidle back and just kind of, again, still very much stealth, just right up until my cheek is like touching around. Just be like, there's mushroom. I can see very far. Yes, it's very interesting. <laughs> um, and in fact, the area that they're in is an enormous cavern filled with various species of mushrooms, as well as a large circular divot in the center. These three fast moving creatures run throughout it, chasing each other. And, um, but you haven't caught their attention, so there's nothing else to read. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm peeking with my Peaks. token because the light keeps shutting them off and I just wanted to look some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like one will like end up finally getting round. another pouncing yeah. on it. Um, kind of doing like a victory screech. Victory. Little, little, little. Do they seem puppy-like in nature? Like just. Like maybe Kinda, they're yeah. the younglings of whatever they're maybe young sporlings almost. They did say go south, but it's just one room after the next. Well, so far it's been a sh more or less a straight shot. Well, we're gonna have to make our way through. And Rick's gonna start to enter this room. Um, as you do, they freeze, stare at you, then duck and hide behind. Um, a large outcropping of mushrooms back here. Oh, poor things. Mm. And then kind of Whoever came back here really spooked him. Uh, the it keeps winding around. There is no it's not it's no straight shot. Hey Oops. Rudy. Uh, yes, I'm 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 interviewing uh, these critters. See if they oh. know anything. What are you? What are you saying? What language are you saying it in? Uh, I'll shoot a shot and just kind of like switch through all, all of mine. You know, I got some, I got some, 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 some Sylvan in there. Just kind of like sitting down and really like squatting down for a second. So, did you see any bad people go by? In Sylvan, they don't respond in any way. I will cycle through my leg. I got common, dwarvish, draconic. You know, I'm, I'm assuming I don't get anything, but I'm going to still, like, take head nods and... At absolutely... draconic, they seem to tilt their heads. Ah, we have a biter. All right. So, do you see anyone mean looking go by? They'll kind of look to each other and then kind of look to the south. And then also kind of look at Puck. <laughs> oh no! Excuse me, you are, you 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 you're uh, scared of my witnesses. Just saying, a dragon can mate with anything. So a half dragon can't though. They're no, scared. but I'm just saying, somewhere along the line, it looks like a dragon in a mushroom. Does it? Does it look <laughs> like that? Not a thirty-three on that. I mean, those raptors are coming close. All right. Uh, so, flail does not exist. You head south, and there's some spooky stuff, correct? And they kind of like nod their heads. You hungry? What do you eat? Need any food? Uh, they were giving food to the last ones. I mean, you, you kind of notice that they'll nibble on the wood around them. Ah. Uh. I have a wooden sword. I'll toss it out for him. Is that isn't that your your magic wooden sword? Oh, I have a magic wooden sword. I forgot. No, no, I just figured out how to play wooden sword. <laughs> because if it's the weapon of verdict, that is a wooden sword. Oh no, I totally okay. forgot about the weapon of verdict. I 
but uh, I, I, I will, I will rescind the comment then. I'll have a, I, had, I probably picked up a good stick. I'm the kind of person who picks up a good stick. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll just kind of like take it and like put it with their hoard of wood. I, y'all have a good day now. And they'll just kind of start chewing on it. And uh, I'll look, oh my goodness. Yeah, you have the branch manager and the assistant branch mm-hmm. branch manager. Uh, <laughs> branch. Hey, hey, hey uh, quarters. You have a tail yet? What you just call him? Quarters. Quarters. Yeah, because you're like a quarter dragon or something. Half. So, sorry, half seas. Attack him. Inter party conflict. So you have chosen death. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we let him get away with it? Because I'm cute. How many times do I teach you this lesson, old man? You, you <laughs> haven't been cute since you were a kid. <gasps> uh, as we're progressing down this tunnel way, I'm gonna <laughs> whisper. I'm gonna whisper to Nim and say, "You're you're a master tracker, aren't you?" Have you noticed any footprints following this way? I mean, I I suspect that there are a fair amount of different footprints just kind of like throughout this entire place, but are there any that look humanoid? Give me a survival check. All right, all right, all right, all right. You see a pair of footsteps that seem to match the footprints of your companions. Um, from what you can tell. Oh, oh. <gasps> No. Oh no! Uh, Roll too high of a stealth check. She stealth too hard. She stealth too hard. <laughs> she still on the call. Um, quick intermission. All <laughs> we have right. to find her. We'll be right back. Okay, so the uh, the tracks that you can find, there's such myriad of them. They're different sizes, and there seems to be something kind of almost dragged where you're going right now. Um, that seemed to kind of be coming from the cavern behind you. In this area, you can't find anything other than your own tracks for humanoids well I'm not seeing other people's footprints but these drag marks are kind of strange drag marks um, you say yeah and they're going this way so that's on maybe a right track by drag marks do you mean like they were dragging something or mm-hmm. would you say it's more like a serpentine GM, can I discern that from that check? There seems to be a solid mass being dragged. No, someone was dragging something. Mm. It's like one thing. Very well, let's uh, continue on. Orsoid, are you... <laughs> I want to take, take a peek and just say uh, with the Indraconic... Uh, oh, hi-ho. Uh, y- y- y'all... Uh, yeah. oh, gosh, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't have to speak Draconic over here, do you? Um, they, they, again, tilt their heads as you speak Draconic. Confirming uh, some previous stories we're following up, because I'm a very serious cowboy. Uh, South, bad people. Not this looking guy. They kind of look at each other uh, and just kind of, like, motion with their heads to the south. All right, I take it back. You're a very useful puck. You know, they have a frame of reference for scary people. Good to know. I'm not, I'm not going to touch that one. I agree. I, I say I would, with a like, cup of my hands towards them, but obviously very stage whispery. And I'll catch up with the grocery group. I won't pull back any longer. Which way did they go? Just over there. Which way did they go? (laughs) 
Oh, you're um, not going to talk to the cute raptors, though? I t- uh, I, I'll, I'll just quickly run through the raptors. We don't have to RP that, of course. Yeah, can I get yes. down this way and cast them out to see what I see in terms of, like, which direction to go? So or the drag marks seem to be going smell to... Smell what I smell. Uh, to your left, so, like, the drag mark seems to be going this way. Um, your... It just smells like the equivalent of a mushroom farm. It's very musty down here. Um, it's also kind of cool. Uh, I mean, you, you're roughly 500 feet underground. Um, you're also kind of hearing voices. But to you, I guess that's not really any different than normal. With the ghosts and all that. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel... <laughs> Like, Flail is pretty frequently hearing whispering and, and you know, moaning, bitching, whining, complaining, all that, just kind of in the background. Uh, so I don't know if I'd pick that up as separate. Um, however, down here, you kind of noticed cobwebs starting to form. Ooh. No, no, no. Yeah, I won't All even. Right. I'll, I'll just continue on if it looks like the drag marks continue this way. Mm-hmm. What's behind the cobwebs? I'm too curious. Can I take a quick peek? Like, yep. super quick. <laughs> um, oh, Nam, whatever you do, don't separate. Nam, just rush and like. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gone. Ah, um, shot. So, Nim, as like you're going, you know, there's like a, obviously a little opening here. Um, the cobwebs seems to start getting thicker this way. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> Hello. There's a little. Yep. I, I wasn't sure if you're here? gonna go in there or not. Look yeah, at the what's, what's going on over here? So, two almost dog-like fungal creatures lay here, whimpering. A few oh, lay nearby, unresponsive and unmoving. A few bones and bits of wood lay scattered, and the two creatures look up to you with round, sad eyes, slash marks across oh. their caps. Oh no, Luca, not again. <laughs> the internet. She was, they were so sad that they made her <laughs> uh, quick. Oh my God, this is so sad. Hurry, quick internet, break. crash immediately. <laughs> Be right back, right? Yep. All right. <laughs> I oh, lied. Hi. We're right back. If anything, <laughs> it's good. At least she bounces back quickly. Yes. Sorry, guys. Jeez. Also, stupid. You've heard a big chungus. This is big fungus. Oh my god. I would rather take a, ch- a fungus than a chungus. Anyway. It's gonna drop again. <laughs> yep. Uh, a few bones and bits of that. blood lay scattered, and the two creatures look up to you with round, sad eyes, slash marks across their caps. One looks back down at their compatriots, nudging them with their face, receiving nothing back as it pushes the creature, slumps back to its position. Oh no. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna come in here. Are they are they cool with me walking in here? Are they like They to go they away? are just big Oh, they're just real sad. <laughs> oh oh no. dude, they're like depressed. Oh, mm. that's really sad. Um Okay. Um Knowing what I know about healing them before, um, it's more food based. So can I do that again? Yeah, um, you can like offer it food, and at first it doesn't accept it. It doesn't seem to want to eat. Um, you can give me an animal handling check to try to get it to more okay. inclined. Oh, come on. 24. Oh, yeah, this thing, like, it, you're able to get, like, a piece of, like, dried fruit in its mouth, and then it just kind of, like, kind of, like, lazily chews at it. Um, and then it's, like, it's more accepting. The other one just kind of, like, comes over and just kind of, like, um, 
nuzzle up on you? <laughs> Is uh, the um, unresponsive one or any chance? There's, there's more than one unresponsive one, but they're beyond saving. Okay. Oh, oh they're just really sad. Okay. Well. Oh, I, I look over at Puck. You get here. I walked. Well, fair enough. We were assigned to make sure you didn't do things on your own. Uh, wow, he's you all the are really light-footed. Okay. I am no-footed because I'm floating, as a cowdoy ah. does. Cowdoy leaves no trace. Oh, it's a good thing I came down here, but we should probably get back to the rest of the group with the, the drag works and everything. Is this really glowing? Uh, yeah. There's a light coming from there. Herm. Cobweb. Yeah. And then they're going to be following you. Oh, okay. <laughs> babies. babies. All right. Question. Well, come on, babies. Point the battle babies. <laughs> Do they also speak draconic? Um, they seem to respond to it. Hmm. It's one of those understands cannot speak. Okay. The babies. I want babies. Um, Puck. As Rock. you were be as you were checking it out, <laughs> that was that led to a, a huge cavern just filled with cobwebs. Hmm. And I mean filled. The spiders are there. I just heard filled with treasure back there. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to go this way because I know that's where a fight is. <laughs> but everybody else is going this way. Yeah, we can we can circle back, or just say we did it in post. All right. So as you all make your merry way into my ever so lovely handmade map, give me a moment to describe what you're going to see before you do anything. First off, you do such a if you job. don't, I will fight you in real life. Oh. You promise? Yes, I will okay. track you down in some way. What is this? So, this is something that took me like forever to do. Um, this cavern opens to large boulders, stalagmites, stalactites, roots, vines, and bioluminescent mushrooms lining its walls. Within, eight large statues stand tall, two farther out than the others. The remaining six hold their hands out, offering something towards the center of the room, which has an enormous, intricate design. The statues facing at angles shed different soft lights, yellow, blue, green, and red. The farthest statue gleams a brilliant white light, whereas the statue with its back to you sheds no light at all. In fact, it seems darker than the rest of the room. Five figures stand at different statues as one stands in the center, chanting. A dead body lays in the pool of blood before each statue's base. Near the far right corner, you notice a large mushroom-covered creature groaning in pain, its breathing labored. As any of you, as you begin to enter this cavern, um, the center chanter speaks. Who grill? Grab the orbs. Um, this time in which they respond with yes Mirsky what do you uh, do quick question does any of them sound like the cultists we fought last time they do not okay and what you see while we are here because they all have cool handouts, but I don't necessarily <gasps> call them cool. Um, one that stands near the yellow light. You notice, you can see like on their entirety are symbols of respective cults you would know of. One standing near the green light is the cultus of the Black Earth. Near the red, Cultus of the Eternal Flame. 
Uh, are we sure? Near the blue, the cultist of the crushing wave. This is the chanter. And finally, the far one with the brilliant, bright statue. There's no one at the negative light statue? There does not appear to be. But you ask, what do we do? As these cultists begin to grab the orbs from each of the statue's hands, do we just do you make your presence known? Well, I could make a distraction for everyone because Rick Charlemagne is a distraction. Rick Charlemagne is not a distraction. He's the whole attraction. Yes. I'm ready to go <laughs> whenever you all are. Same. Uh, um, a distraction would be helpful. We can move so we're not cluttered, but um, I, I think it'd be best. I can take someone up in the yeah. air. Whatever they're doing, it's hurting that first thing in the back. Get I will need, let them do if, it. since you guys seem to be discussing, can I get a group stealth check, please? No! Because you're, you're essentially formulating a plan. Uh, do we get advantage since they're busy? I will, in, I will lower the DC necessary for the group to meet. Okay. Because they, not, they, they are going to be aware that where they are and what they're doing, they're going to do what they can to pay attention, but they also have a thing going on. Uh, so what did Rick shot a main get? He got a 12. <laughs> well, he did better than I did. <laughs> Okay, so we have a 12, 6, 20, 18, 16, and 12. <laughs> Let me just roll a do something real quick. Don't uh, worry about uh, it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ooh, mm -hmm. Interesting number I rolled there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, uh, before uh, Rick, do you want to use your inspiration and re-roll that dice or no? No, nah, nah, not this time. I, Because I wasn't the lowest anyway. Hey. Damn. Y'all can be better at this than me. Has. So some of you appear to know what whispering is. Um, some people don't know what whispering is. <laughs> um, Indoor voices? It's because I keep speaking right up against Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Flail, you actually did pretty decent for yourself. Um, yeah, it was more Maran like is, yeah, Maran's Nim Moran. Yeah, I, but I'm yeah, saying I, I like to think I step on something. I didn't speak too loud. I, I stepped on something. Don't you have your inspiration? I'm not going to use it for this one. This. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I refuse. If there are no alterations to anyone's roles. Doesn't sound like it. Nope. Let's push Mirsky, on. Mirsky will look back because also her orb that she will be grabbing is that way and as she kind of comes down that way she'll hear you sp speaking um, and she will uh, raise her staff and get the orbs now as each of them seems to pull um, an orb and Light will go, and I need everyone to roll initiative. I, I already rolled it. I knew this is where we were going. Uh, yep, we're, we're on a streak. We're on a, just a great streak roll. <laughs> I don't know what's happening this session. Okay, there's that one. Looks 
excuse me as I just do some quick secrets. Uh, <laughs> wow, garbage. I got a 14 for my initiative. All right, let's find Rick. A 14, you say? Yeah. All right. So as Mirsky runs, she will cast a bolt of lightning from her staff. She rolled, she rolled that well. She, however, you will all be able to make it out of the way as you will be far enough away and she's not like stopping, taking a time to aim this. She's like haphazardly hucking this bolt at you all. Um, you can kind of move away from your spots up to 10 feet away as you like you are dodging this bolt. Ah, fucking dynamic as hell, man. Uh, oh, actually, could I pick up since I can fly? As long as they do not stop you. Cool, cool. And as each of these cultists seems to grab an orb and take a quick step back, you will see that the wave a wave surges rising with a roar and it comes crashing down the water rushes in all directions filling every available space in an instant and then as suddenly as it crashes down it rises once more inexplicably this time the wave looms upward strange unnatural movements bring it to its full height shape forms humanoid limbs stretching outward and a vague face glaring downward with a roar like thunder like waves crashing against rocks the elemental form rises from its statue a contained haze part mirage part fog whispers throughout the air roughly eight feet in diameter the thing floats of its own accord heedless of any wind Questing appendages spin out of its form in tight whirlwinds to investigate the space around it. Crackling flames rise high as a bonfire, but there's not enough fuel. They simply erupt out of nothing and roar upward. The heat is real enough, though. Anything flammable touching this fire as long ago turned to cinder and smoke. The fire moves, not following something it consumes, but like a huge person stepping forward. Each of these appears to be coming out of where these bodies are from these statues. Last. Northern, towards the northern one, however, there's an odd change. It's not... It's not an elemental. It seems to be almost like a cat that appears and you'll notice that this cultist in front of it twists its hand about and this creature's glowing white eyes darken it looks like oh I don't know what actually happened Looks like this. Ah, uh, hmm. that's why it reminded me of a space. It's a celestial. <laughs> and lastly, oh, remind it reminds me of the the actually no. Well, um, Moran, please go. It looks like a lock dragon. Are you sure you want me to say something else? Nope, you're good. Um, I. Uh, take out like I take out my wand of magic missile and immediately send out uh, all all charges at the uh, eternal flame cultist 
for 94 plus 9. He will shield. <sighs> I okay. know. That's okay. That's okay. Magic That's okay. is fickle. That's... It's okay. Is it UK? Um... You can say no. no. I'm sad. <laughs> that mean? Sorry, that, Fred. That is a status effect. It's a major effect. <laughs> Did you have anything else you wanted to do, Moran? I would like to... I moved up, and... I'm going to cast. I'm going to hold my action actually, and I'm going to wait till. Um, I'm going to wait till my friends, all my friends, get through their actions. Okay. Before I cast. Um, before I cast, what's what, what is it? It's uh, I believe it's thirty feet. I'm sorry, my D and D Beyond is like messing up right now. Before I cast hold person, um, who that will be, I will decide soon. But okay, I'm gonna hold that action until all of them finish their attacks. So, Pogoril is going to move to the center. And you're going to see him wave his staff around, and you're going to see a dome kind of form, like bubbling almost out from him, and almost taking out around the perimeter of this circle on the floor. And as you see, uh, Rick, go ahead. Uh, could I go also? Oh? You skipped me a little bit. Are you? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. It's okay. I get forgotten about sometimes. It happens. Uh, <laughs> it happens. Uh, I'm going to take my turn to try and speed up directly towards her. Okay. And I would like to try and grab her orb. You're going to grab her orb? Yeah, I'm going to... Grab the orb! I'm going to steal it. Um, okay, you can attempt to. <laughs> I like to make an <laughs> athletics check if that's okay. Uh, sure. All right, he's just going to, like, literally, with just this big whoosh of a uh, wind. Uh, oh, gosh, at the pinnacle moments, this is... <sighs> a ten. Wait, hold on. Am I able to use uh, my quadling thing on other people that yes. are not enemies? Okay, that's a 19 instead. Well, natural 19. So as you go to take this, um, Rudy, you hear um, a pair of glowing eyes is your only warning of a sudden approach. A shadowy, incorporeal form looming forth from foreboding darkness. Grimly, its legless body floats toward you, its human-like hands grasping at you. Its skeletal face, a grinning rictus, eyes gleaming with anticipation at the primitive thought of its next kill. A bitter chill whispers down your spine at the undead's fearsome appearance. A fell creature straight out of nightmares and ghost stories. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is I, a wraith. Cool. Oh. cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, five feet this way. That's my last move. Uh, okay. As Near a pure, speed, like, fear, yeah. We'll attempt to do something with that quick attack of opportunity. Okay. Um... 
Give me a contested grapple check, because she's going to try to grab you like you're not getting away, bitch. No! 12! <laughs> I can't help oh. you. You did better than I did. Ha! <laughs> um, she is just kind of like unable to grasp you, but the wraith also gets to do his fun little thing. Okay. That's totally fair and valid for both of them. I don't like it, but it's okay. And she like as what appears to be a nearly incorporeal sword um, drives at you. Does a 19 hit? Yes, it will. You will take. I need you to make a con save as well, sir. 20. Okay. You will take 16 necrotic damage. Ow. As it drains you of your life force. Okay, still fine. Uh, I'm going to assume that also makes it so I lose a hit point maximum or something. Because that's how uh, it you're, sometimes You're good. Works. You're oh. fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because I made the save. Duh. Okay. Yes. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, all right. Yeah, didn't enjoy that, but that is going to be my move. All right. How far up in the air are you? Uh, five feet diagonally. So I was just like hovering to grab, and so I'm basically oh. five feet up in the air. So I'm not really that far Hello, yet. Hello, says the wraith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does it... That's even higher. I need another con save, sir. Okay. Uh, con save, you say? Uh, yep. well, I could do one of those again. Natural twenty. I'm do. Resisted. However, you will be taking 24 necrotic damage. Oh my god. Yeah, wraiths are nasty. Okay. So if you do two attacks? No, well, his first, first thing was a reaction because horse, uh, Rudy uh, got out of his range. Thank you for respecting my fake persona. Um, <laughs> Someone's got it. Uh, yeah, I don't appreciate that on a you know emotional level, but I'll take it. And he's like right up on you. Mm -hmm. You. I'm. I'm still holding the orb, though, right? Uh, unless you dropped it by getting absolutely life not. drain. Twice. Absolutely not. That is. That is a you know running back you know grip held like only someone who could preciously hold objects can hold things. Um. Rick, it is your turn. Rick is seeing the chaos going on. Is like, ah, ah, Rudy, Judy, you you can do this. I believe in you. Uh, I'm gonna give him bardic inspiration as a bonus action. Uh, so you'll keep that in your pocket when you need it. I'm gonna move. Up to here. As he's moving, he's basically reaching around his back and pulling out an accordion. <laughs> okay. Well, let's dance. And on the Earth Cultus, he's going to need to make me a wisdom save. Oh, DC is 16. Good. Um, 16. I got a 15 on the die, so with his bonus, it is a 17. Dang it. Okay. Uh, Sorry, he resists auto, Otto's irresistible dance. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, that was Wait, horrifying. Doesn't it just, like, <laughs> happen for the first turn? It's true. Does it? It does. Oh, yeah. oh no, yeah, At it does. Because it's round. irresistible. Yeah, it'll it'll go for <laughs> on, one on his, round, Because it's irresistible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it'll not resist. It's one where the wording is very tricky. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, it, 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 he it just hears the com music. A compelling dance. It, uh, we must use all its movement to dance without leaving its space and its disadvantage on deck saves and attack rolls. While the target is affected by the spell, other creatures have advantage on attack rolls against it. As an action, they can make a wisdom save to regain control. Would okay. you do that? 
Okay. But yeah, he's basically gonna at least spend a round dancing and capering. What'd you do, Don? The Earth guy. Got it. Uh, and I already spent my bonus action. Okay. Um. And I think that's all. Okay. The air elemental. Decides to it go. seems you would expect it, much like how the Wraith attacked Rudy by taking the orb. It doesn't seem to attack this cultist. It starts to move past them and is stopped at the perimeter of the circle. It starts to come kind of like almost like inching around it. Like, almost trying to get to the center without being able to. Almost fruitlessly. Puck. Yeah. I'm gonna move up to here. That's, I'm gonna take a dash action to get that far. Okay. Bonus action, though, I'm gonna use my breath weapon. Sure. Uh, I am going to spend an empower point to double its range, so it's 10 feet wide and 60 feet long. So I need okay. fire, air, and the two cultists to make uh, dexterity saving throws. All right. So the air elemental got an 8. The fire elemental got a 23. And the cultists? Both cultists? Mm -hmm. How fucking far is your breath? So it's normally 30 feet because I doubled it. It's okay. 60 feet. Gotcha. And then it's 10 feet wide. So it hits all of them. You have and then the or... flame cultist got a 17. The hatred got a 16. All right. So the, both the cultists make it and so does the fire. The air doesn't. Okay. So they're going to take half as much damage the arrow ooh it's only rolled a six <laughs> what oh, the that's, fuck that's garbage damage that's, but the air ooh. the air elemental is baned ooh because it didn't make it right um, um two, three, and you're gonna one. see that the two elementals turn to you mm -hmm. um in that moment I release my spell I Tw uh, twin it, and I aim for Merska and the Eternal Flame Cultist. Hold person. Hold people, rather. How far is a hold person still? 60. 60. Let me double check. I believe so. It's 60 feet. Okay. Do 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 do. Alright, Mirski rolled an 18 on the die. And then the flame cult is fit. We need to. So, well, then the, the flame cultist is at least paralyzed. Yeah. At least have one person held down. All right, that is my turn. Oh. No! <laughs> Should we just power through as he comes back? Yeah. Might as well. At least until her turn. Okay. I'll, I'll get everybody relatively. Oh, Mirski. Mirski, Mirski. Um. Let me hold the speed to which I can work. All right, she's going to have to deal with that. Um, Orsoid, I need you to I, make... I... Sorry, Rudy. I need you to make a wisdom save. Can I not and say we did? <sighs> Shit. Three. You got dominate person. Uh, actually, uh, funny thing. I don't count as a person, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, um... I'm not affected by abilities to affect humanoids. Oh, <gasps> okay. <laughs> she does not know that. No, she don't. Make her use that spell slot. She knows that her spell went off flawlessly. The fact that you don't stop... Oh, you couldn't even see my coy cat tip and wink, audience. It was very <laughs> coy. It was so coy. It was so coy, it was a koi fish. Mm-hmm. It's a koi. It's a koi. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> Not that kind of episode. Well, we'll make it that kind of episode. I have the power. No, Elemental um... Chad. No. Oh, God. All right, well, now I'm no longer comfortable with this bit. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, she can go and waste that spell slot for me. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, whole girl's gonna... Oh, no, he already had his, but I need the cultists to do their thing. Um, so the earth cultist is going to have to spend his whole turn getting out of his Otto's irresistible dance <laughs> let the music flow <laughs> the crashing wave will come over he could not stop the beat as will the howling hatred and they'll give their orbs to Ogril who kind of like puts them in a bag and be able to do that. They're going to kind of come to the edge of this dome. That's going to be all they can do. Um, he's not going to make it out of that. And the eternal flame. It's going to get out of your hold person. Because you rolled a 19 on the die. Boo. But that is at the end of his turn, so... I have a cost. Bow tree um, fitty. So much like the air elemental, the watermelon was going to kind of make its way, just kind of like washing over the cultist. Are they the getting... fire elemental, however. Hello, Puck. Um, it's going to touch you. There's a 17 hit. There's a 17 hit. <laughs> no. Okay. Apparently, it does not touch you. Creepy touch. Smack um, his hand. Bad touch. No. You, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> um. It's going to. Oh. Um. Uh, the flail. I do not know how she do. Um. He has joined the ghost people. For it, for this quick turret, I will move her to Moran. Which is a Felidar. Who will attempt to like try to pounce through this, and you'll just hear a boom as it hits the dome. <laughs> <laughs> and it will just use its claws to like climb to the top and kind of come out the other side by Mirski. This fucker's got some speed. Um, that's gonna be his turn. We go to Nim. Dear Lord, did that change things? Okay, well, eh, I guess I'm just gonna go anyway. Um, well, I'm gonna measure this out again. Yep, because I'm gonna have to dash to get to just about here. But uh, given uh, 
Eldo's uh, movement, he does not have to dash, which is going to be great. Um, so this lizard is going to kind of run up around the pillar and <laughs> um, try to take an attack at this wraith, I guess. That's the only thing within range to attack based on movement. So um, we're just going to do that. I'm going to bonus action command him to attack. So uh, we're going <sighs> to do a couple. And since he ran more than 20 feet, um, there's going to be some special stuff with that. Um, I have to hit with the mole attack, but uh, if I do hit, it's going to do an extra d8, and uh, I'm going to need a strength save. Uh, but yeah, let's do that really fast. Um, mall. 25 to hit. Sure. For 12 slashing. Okay. Um, so, oh, and then let me do that extra d8. Um, so make that 18. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need a strength save. I don't think oh, this can be prone, but like... Why not? It got an 18. Okay, well that saves anyway. Um, and now, because I'm past level 5, uh, this gets a multi-attack, so we're gonna do this again. Ooh, I don't think a 10's gonna hit, though. It will not. Alright, huh? <laughs> I love the lizard drawing. That's very good. It's also a medium creature. I didn't realize that until I looked back at the stat block. <laughs> like, oh, this is like maybe a Komodo dragon, but smaller. There, I made it small. Oh, this is very good. Okay, cool. Um, and that is all I can do. Alright, the earth elemental. Um, it's going to kind of like overstep the cultist not being able to come in and just kind of walk back. And kind of walk towards you all. Just see if it would even bother. Ooh. Hmm. It's got three targets. Ah, uh, the lizard. <gasps> okay. No. Um, It'll be fine. 27 to hit. Okay, that hits. For 19 damage. Okay, still low. 25 to hit for 15. Oh, he's doing two? Okay, cool. Yeah, he, he slams. Um, okay. This thing does not understand up, but damn. who or what has brought it here, and it is trying to stop it. <laughs> so obviously the lizard is what brought him here, right? <laughs> uh, it's it's an earth. It has a very low intelligence. <laughs> Got rocks for brains. <laughs> Actually, <Yeah>. though, <laughs> Moran. Uh, we're going to just skip over with, um, what, which, 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 which call them, uh, Flail. Uh, can we get Flail to be in a position to grab the orb? Should I toss it to her and then disappear into stealthiness? Sure. Anyone opposed? I could... I have I have some a degree of control over over flail. Yeah, behold, that's my power. <laughs> behold, behold my power. Behold my power. <gasps> um. Okay. I'm going to. I believe it's over here, it's where they're all out of range. Yeah, none of them. Yeah, no, don't even touch me. It's in this corner. <laughs> um, about, I want to distract them. So, oop. on the opposite side, where uh, the light statue was, that where the Teladar came from mm -hmm. that direction, like in front of it, uh, about 20 feet in the air. Mm. 
a shadow dragon appears as I cast major image. I repeat from last time. Okay. And it, it's, it last time was a black dragon. This one's a shadow dragon. Um, so shadows are wreathing across this dragon. And it has semi corporeal form and it just uh, roars at the cultists. Would this affect everyone? I would, I mean, I, let me show you the... It's a, it's a visual, visible phenomenon so that seems to be real, real. Everyone. As long as you're within range of it, which is a hundred and... Oh, you can alter it. Um, physical entry. So, what everybody sees and what Moran knows is not is a shadow dragon. Appearing. We do see him casting it, basically. Like, but everybody would see him casting it, too. But, yeah. But, I mean, like, we would assume if he's summoning this dragon, it's on his side. Our side, right? You've seen me do it with a black dragon. You may feel like, okay, this is, you know, they don't understand. They, they wouldn't know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. he summoned it. But you kind of, you would probably get my, you know, we talked about this before. It, it, the point is, is that it, it's not that we know it's major image. It's that if this is a creature, he's the one summoning it. So it should yeah. be on our side. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, And I... And I quicken Firebolt to fire at the Air Elemental. Okay. For 21. That'll hit. <sighs> Boo, nine fire. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, no, that'll be it. Okay. I have to find this one. Oh, grill. will God he can't pull anybody to him can't do that um how far away is Orsoid you have something he needs uh no I am exactly too far away I would think 60 feet. <laughs> I need a con save, sir. A con save? I don't mm -hmm. save cons. I'll use that D8, thank you very much. 16. Come on. 16. It has to pass. Is not enough. Fuck. I mean, frankincense. I mean. You feel <laughs> this wave of energy. I will energy. give you my inspiration. You have an orb, and I want you to not be anything pulled. I want you to have my inspiration to reroll. Is that, is that all kosher? Can I'll you... allow it this time, but next time. 20. All Ready? right, well, you all take half as you feel energy just flood your body. Hmm. And it's going to be... Boop, boop, boop. Please roll. 17 Radiant instead of the 34. Oh. That's very good, because that means oh. I get to get to stay awake. Yeah, how, how's Rudy doing? Oh, Rudy, Rudy, 
Rudy Rudy Toot Toot he he uh, Rudy is, is 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 not he, he's down to his last uh puty pute pute's all right um speaking of it's his turn yeah uh oh boy uh i need to use my action and i want to shuck that orb over the flail okay i was just going to say dis disengage What's I, your strength score? Uh, 20. I'd be strong now. What the fuck? I believe. Uh, then yeah, I assume you could chuck a hefty orb 30 feet. Yeah. Baller. Um, but playable. Kobe. <laughs> Buckets. And she'll catch it. Ha! Sweet. <laughs> Technically, Flail's just a cardboard cutout right now. <laughs> it just the, like uh, takes out one of the hands. Like, good job, Flail. <laughs> the uh, the the, the... <laughs> it's like the cutouts in the arcade where there's a hole. Which is <laughs> nice throw. Um. Oh God. Okay. Uh, beyond that, I don't have a ton else I could do with bonus actions. Uh, so. I'm okay. going to try and fly really high up in the sky. I have 60 feet of movement. I'm going to make it everyone's problem. Um, out of reach of my wraith. Yes, that would be the goal, ideal situation here for me. I'm hoping that the ball does flying away. Does 15 hit? Nope, it does not. I am. Okay. <laughs> you are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else for your turn? Um... It's a bonus action to fear for my life. Um, the downside is I can't heal you up there, but... <laughs> yeah, you're out of touch range now. So like... I am okay fine. with being out of some ranges. Um, but yeah. Well, they have one. Okay. No. It's fine. He'll come back down eventually. The we Wraith don't... wants just... its orb. I'll just be up here. No. I specifically didn't want this to happen. <laughs> and we'll attack poor, poor Flail. Okay. At 20. What is her AC? Uh, 14. So that will hit. She has to make a con save. Please. Which she does. Crit. Take 14 damage. <sighs> okay. I... I was really worried I was going to get Lucas' character killed when she wasn't here. <laughs> oh, that might still happen. <laughs> uh, hey, Rick, it's your turn. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, so that Wraith is going after Flail. Now, quick question. When I saw the guy take the orbs and you said they put them in a sack... Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Did it look like it was a bag of holding sack or just a normal sack? It looks like a bag. I know, but like when he puts in these orbs, do they like bulge or did the bag still seem to be the same? Are you trying to notice his bulge? Yes. Does he have a bulge? Ooh. Does um... his bulge, <laughs> bul bulge in his sack? Or no? Full circle. Um. No. They, they do not bulge. Nope. Okay. Uh, how am I going to... Well, you know, let's try one thing first. Um, knowing his friend's languages, Rick Charlemagne is going to... Shout out to uh, Nim and say, "Quick, how do you say an Ogwin to attack the guy with the Earth Earth cloak?" Uh, <laughs> you probably turn back over, um, Eric, and uh, use this language that, like, I feel like above water, it is not as pretty sounding. Um, like, it just sounds like. 
crashing waves, but is super loud. Yeah. Oh, just different <laughs> sounds. <laughs> yeah. It does not sound as pretty no. above water, though. Hey, water elemental. If I can make a suggestion. Uh, it can roll me a wisdom save. Which one? The water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three. Yay. Uh, so basically, the suggestion is that if it's, it should be attacking that guy if it's trying to get its orbs. Did you have anything else? Yeah, um, what's it up there? Move to here. Wait. At the right spot. Yeah. Um, and Marana, you don't have the ability to give me a quicken spell, do you? Not anymore. Okay. You're out of my reach anyways. Okay, that's fair. Uh, move there. Yeah, that'll be my the end of my turn. Okay. The air elemental is going to fight Puck as well after getting blasted with his breath. 22. Roll a d4 for me. No. He's you bastard. Oh, shit. He rolled a whole ass four, so an 18. Doesn't hit. Yay. Second attack. That's even lower already. So I don't <laughs> need to roll Bane. <laughs> we love Bane. All right. Uh, Puck, you're up. Ito, I'm going to move to here, and the air elemental can make an attack of opportunity on me. Okay. Uh, number 18. Say it again. Another 18 with the Bane. Doesn't hit, so. All right. Uh, first things first, on my turn, going to roll my recharge for my breath weapon. That is a five, so I get it back because I improved breath weapon. Okay. All right. Everybody in this 60 foot line that is five feet wide, so all the cultists. Mm -hmm. You need to make me a dexterity saving throw. Only one will be making you a dexterity saving throw. As your breath goes forward... It's not a breath weapon. What it's, is... I'm using voltage. Which is... The magic sword that you gave me. I could use its one charge to do a line of lightning. A line of lightning. Mm -hmm. So, same dealio. Mm-hmm gonna hit that dome oh so they're in the dome i thought the dome was the so, around it. so the Green. dome is around the perimeter of the outer circle okay okay did you affect See, what you were going to do yes because okay. i thought the the kate like the, the yeah. no it is around, around the entire perimeter of the outer circle okay so it's it's the whole it goes to where the edge of this is then yeah yeah, that does change how I would aim that then. Yeah, so like how long is that line? You could do a diagonal. No, yeah, I was going to do it like this then. I was going to hit the elementals, but... Yeah, technically you could hit the elementals and well, Marski. Well, I mean the cultists, but... I still could hit this cultist and the other cultist, but that angle would also it's, then hit yeah. him and the crack it up. And that's for which only is your... Please so. don't hurt my lizard more. <laughs> He's... He's looking bad. That would have also changed how I moved as well, knowing that, but oh well. Shoot it at the thing. Make good mistakes. Acceptable collateral. All right. <laughs> um, knowing what I know then, I would position here. Okay. I saw a movement for that. 
not where I want to be, but <laughs> actually more so there. Okay. You know, I might as well just go back to where I started. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. But question, would that hit him? This cultist. Who? Which the one? black earth. It's a it's a five foot line. Yes. Okay. So then, you'd, you'd obviously have to kind of get into their area to an extent. I mean, I still got movement, so... Because that was going back and forth. That's... What? Dude, dude. Yeah, I got enough. <laughs> Just enough. So I can move slightly down then. And that should be enough to angle it to where I could hit like that, right? So that would be 60. Sure. So that should hit uh, the Sphinx, Minsky, the Water, and the Black Earth. Not the, not the, not the Celestial. Okay. I mean, it's in my way. He's pulling so, aggro if you want. <laughs> so I need those four to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. The Felidar got a 20. The Water Elemental, 22. Mm -hmm. The Earth Cultist, a 90. Mm -hmm. And Mirski. She will get a an eight all right uh everybody but mirski makes it so they're gonna take half damage this is going to be oh did i put away my other d6 i did i'll just roll three of them and then roll an extra and so she's gonna take 19 lightning damage everybody else will take half Nine. Okay. And then bonus action. I'm on a breath weapon. I'm going to extend its range. So now it's 10 feet wide. So it'll catch the air elemental as well. Okay. I don't think it's wide enough to catch the earth elemental. No, not if you're trying to also get the cultist. Like, I could position it there, but that's... I don't think it's wide enough. So, all of them, again, dexterity saving throws, please. Water. 13. The air. A 14. The... Belladar got 20. The Cultus got 4. Mirski got 22. Uh, the Celestial and Mirski all make the save. They're going, everybody else is going to take full damage and be bang. God damn it, where did that dice go? <laughs> Dropped one of my d6. <laughs> but, and Mirski and the Celestial take half. They all take 14 psychic damage. And then everybody that was hit, except for Mirski and Federline, are banned as well. And that is my turn. Yeah. You might want to mark things as banned just to help, because there's quite a few now. Oh, Bane looks like a wrench. It's a black wrench, so. All right, and that is, that is my turn. All right. I need... A drink. This. Let's see. Can I do that? Oh, okay. I need Flail to make a strength check. Just a straight strength check. Come on. She has a plus two. 
We'll use it. Minus one. Oh, we did? Oh. Well, no, I said, like, let's use it. Oh, yeah. Luca yeah. cannot be putting a plus two on her old character. <laughs> God, I don't okay. know. She She's not in the game, so it's not against she, her. She is her not. That can be for is. someone else. That is not her. Life. You're controlling her character, so. I was given permission <laughs> to run her character. Oh, was the plus two not for her, then? I don't know. Yeah, here, Luca, with your plus twos. And I have to do an ability check. Okay. So that is how far? How strong is a wraith? No, well, the, the issue thing. being is that the orb that flails carrying is <gasps> getting pulled from her. Oh my god. So it's going to sit right here. Draw us an orb, you're the DM man. Oh, come on. Ball is the ball is fumbled at the five. <laughs> the five. <laughs> um I, I have a question. Was that contested or not? Or was yes. that just she had to make? It is a contest. It's her spell cast. She has to make a spell casting ability check contested by Flail's strength check. Okay. Barely. And that's about all Mirsky can do. Oh, so you'd have, it was a, a roll. Uh, um, it is a roll. If I knew that, I would have Silvery Barbs did. Silvery Barbs? Like, well, because it's a reaction, and so if I knew if it was like a ability check, I can disadvantage it. She's like in a Not weird. Risky. She's like in the weird halvesy point between those two squares. Um. Water so elemental. She, yeah. It's gonna try to go for the earth element or the earth Ooh, cultist. It's not gonna go after me because I hit it. Uh, yes. I, I gave it a suggestion. suggestion. Does damage get rid of suggestion? I thought it did. Uh, if you are uh, your companion's damage to target, the spell ends, yes. Yes. So it will splish splash over to Puck. Good job, Puck. Is that provoking an opportunity check from my lizard? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Gizzard lizard. <laughs> Randall snake. Oh my god, here it is. <laughs> ah, why did my character sheet get closed out? I didn't do that. It's fine. The 19 hit. That will definitely hit. Alright. Four. Ten slashing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Puck does a minus that a 20 hit. Ooh, just hits. For 13 bludgeoning. Okay, that's and that's not going to hit because it's going to be even worse. <laughs> Tony, yeah, you activated my trap card. The fire now elemental. I do more damage. Yes, but how long can you do this? Uh, that's not gonna hit. Is a nineteen? that burns twice. Uh, nineteen. Is that with Bane? Uh, the fire mantle is not Bane. Oh, you're right. Nineteen beats it. Fourteen fire damage. All right. Um, an additional two fire damage, and you are set on fire. All right. And you will continue to take damage. Um. At the start of each of your turns until the fair is put out. <laughs> Damage doesn't scare me, Tony. It empowers um, it me. It um. empowers me. You're going to see, Dev, Mor Moran, your... These... The... the for, mm, words. The Flame Cultist and the Earth Cultist seem afraid... The other two don't, along with Pogrill, they feel like their dome 
is safety to them. Like, they're like, oh, fuck, they got a fucking dragon. This is bullshit. Um, the flame cultist is going to make his way in and huck his orb to Pogrill. Um, as well, the earth cultist. Um, Flail says she will be... <laughs> running? No. I, I think she plans to grab the orb and then run. Okay. I can grab the orb and run. But what if Flail wants to try and run past and take an opportunity attack, that'd be fine by me. I She's guess. going to bonus action disengage. Smart. To run up. Grab the orb. Um, you can action disengage if you wanted to. Could she toss it up no to me? Point. How far up are you? I went 60 feet up. Oh, shit. Now with a eight strength. If. Yeah, she's a she has a negative strength mod. Um, and she will, I guess, just try to. I know I feel like she finds safety in Moran right now, so hi, she's coming for you. Surely she can. Done. Surely she can move faster than that. She only has thirty feet of speed. And she already used her bonus not to get shanked by a wraith. Can you bonus action dis disengage and then action dash? Is that how it works? I don't know what it was. Picking up something might count as an action. No, it's part of the movement. Um, she had to she had to action dash to get close to you. Otherwise, she would have ended her turn right next to the water elemental. Okay. The Felidar. Hello, Puck. <laughs> like... You pulled aggro from like such. I, I don't know how the Felidar. Oh, it went around. Okay, I was thinking, I'm like, how is it hitting me from there? <laughs> I mean, mm, gotta push I mean, through I guess the water it could and air. Throw air elemental, but possibly take damage. It could leap like a kitty cat. Yeah, it'll um, it'll make a strength save to not get fucked up from the from like basically going through the air elemental. So. It will make it, but still take damage. Okay, thank you for not rolling damage, you bastard game. 17. So, 9 damage. Is it just... Ah, oh, fuck, it's going to have to go through well, the water one as well. Good job. Good job, me. Pat on the back. Okay, not whelmed either, but ah, stop rolling so high. It's another eight damage, and now it can attack you. Fuck, I'm hurting myself with my own confusion. Mm -hmm. We'll take anything at this point. <laughs> um, it's going to bite you. A twenty-three to hit. That hits. Twenty piercing damage. This thing's bite puck seems extraordinary. Uh, it's claws even more so as a 26 to hit. Yeah. For another 20. Okay. Are you still awake? Yeah. Oh my God. I have max con. Fear, <laughs> but good. Um, that is its turn, Nim. All right, um, I'm just going to mosey on, like, circling this earth elemental, I guess. 20. Um, and, yep, I'm within 10 feet of uh, Nierski. Um, so, uh, I was going to uh, grab his uh, handy-dandy self-mending net out of his bag and... Uh, try to uh, trigger a uh, grappling trap on uh, on Mirsky. So I what? throw it out as an action. Um, it's triggered. So I guess it just happened. Um, 
and the creature is grappled. Um, is that even like a, a dex against it? Um, let me see. Let me go back to traps because that's what I was really confused about. I was like, the wording on this is not the best sometimes. Um, I think it might be. It might be a dex when it moves into the tracks uh, into the trap space. So yeah, it's a dex save. It's just a weird thing of like triggering it on someone's space. Well, um, eight's so, not gonna do it. Yeah, uh, that, that's gonna fail. So um, yeah, um, Mirsky is currently grappled um, and I can use an action to attempt to escape. Um, yeah, uh, so that's my action. Um, bonus action, I guess I'm just gonna command uh, Melzo to uh, continue doing damage to this earth elemental. I don't really know how that's gonna go, but you know. Uh, first one, 26 to hit. That'll hit. Or nine. Uh, second hit, natural 20. That'll hit. For 17. Gotcha. <laughs> He's upside down. I love that. Anything else? Um, that's it. All right, he's gonna punch your lizard. No, don't do the 14 that. The fourteen hit. Um, hold on. No, it doesn't. Does a crit or twenty? Can it not? Can it not? <laughs> Unfortunately, it can, and it will do 22 damage. Oh, yeah, no. Um, Nildo is super out then. Uh, so I'm going to have to resummon that later. Um, well, um, whoa. It just, just smashes close. and just poof. Yeah, into dust. Whoa. Moran. Moran. Shit, what's even going on? <laughs> like... Uh, Flail is just like footballing this orb to you. Um, I don't know if you have anything for that wraith. That wraith is gonna. This is gonna come for you. <laughs> what you gonna do when the wraith comes for you? I'm gonna envelop, I'm gonna come closer to flail and spend the last two of my sorcery points to cast uh, darkness and surround me and flail together um, and hold this together. I'll hold on to them while the 20 foot sphere uh, surrounds us, so that way people can't see us. I don't know how to do, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do spheres. Thank you. So it's like, is it centered on the ground or where are you centering it? Um, Just a, just a little bit for uh, away from the Felidar, just. Oh no, like where are you centering the spell itself? Um. A few, like maybe a square or two, uh, south west. So that way, the Felidar is not partially in it. Yeah. Okay. So, question: If I enter this, what does it do? It's the darkness spell, but because I did it with my sorcery points, only I can see through it. Okay. Um. And I will just tell Flail, hold on to me, follow my. Follow my, like, my, you know, I'm holding on to you. Follow me. And I can, I can see everything outside of the sphere of darkness. And that's my turn for now. Okay. Hogarill. Just getting up steady spaghetti. Do the spells. 
Can't see me. Darkness and How far is this? Uh, and everyone else is too far away for some of these. He wants that fucking orb. And he doesn't really care. Um, I need this is going to suck. What? Uh oh, I need everyone to make a con save. Uh -oh. He doesn't have con time. Save. He needs to get out. I'm like good at every, those. Like everyone, <clears throat> everyone, because I'm going to roll this with real dice, a sphere seems to appear above the darkness statue and oh, then okay. explodes in sunlight uh, uh, that is this is where and i am everybody sir. has to make a concept and i mean yeah. every elemental and felidar wraith everything is making a con save all right Hold whoever the... rolls lowest on this take the advantage from chat let me also say that all the, I'm saying the dragon disappears obviously because they were. <laughs> Can I take the advantage then? Because I rolled a three. <laughs> yes, take that. Also, don't forget you have inspiration still. Yeah, because if you have inspiration, let's see what it is. Because let's see if you have plus two. But, well, it's going to be a 15. Um, uh, Flail you... sitting at the 11. Uh, Rick, how are you in health? I haven't been hit yet. We should take the plus two. You're like kind of in it, so I guess you can take it. I'll take the hit. I mean, I can heal myself for up to 55. I'm good. So long as I don't get wiped out in one hit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm at 15, so. Well, uh, has Flail used their inspiration? I don't think so, so it'd probably be a good idea to do it with the fucking garbage roll that they got. <laughs> this is the same one. No! Well. I mean, poetic. Did anybody meet or beat a 17? I beat it. I rolled a 25. Um, I would with a plus two. I beat it with a 19. I, I would beat it with a plus two as well. I don't know if there's a free one. You failed this save. Let me double read this spell. Oh boy. Um, <clears throat> you are blind for a minute. You will take 50 radiant damage. And you see that wraith is obliterated. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness that is um, God. Thought. Would I be blinded if it in my sphere? Your sphere's dispelled. Yeah, yeah it's it is eighth light. level or lower. Yeah. What is this sunburst? So just, Probably. just a question: Is there a plus two that's free grab? Yeah, take it. I'll, I can handle it. I, oh, only oh. because I would just make it. Literally, it's and fine. be able to try my. I think. Sorry, did Nim take it? I mean, I can. Or like I, I'm going down with this damage. <laughs> Just Wait. cross the board. Nim can also can you only heal yourself. No, I can heal anybody for up to 55 hit points right now. I can get Nim up if I survive. So distribute to myself. But we need to decide. Though, we need to decide so. now who's taking yeah. the plus two before we hear anything else from from, from I would I understand that you go next initiative I would vote the, the person who can actually heal stay up I, I can also heal not as much but I because if I heal Nim I won't be able to try my other thing right now I think but if I if I don't take it I'm dead I think we are great okay so avoiding death sounds pretty important Nim would you die 
I mean, yeah, I have 43 max, so... Yeah, I have 45 I'm, I'm max. Down. You be knocked down in pat. Okay, shit. I mean, healing would still get you back up. Healing would get you up, though, as well. Yeah. Counterpoint. Wait, can I... <laughs> How much was the full, the full damage? 50 radiant. 50. 50. Got it, like... like... And now. you will notice, now. like... No Even Mirsky is being blinded. Yeah. She got caught I can... in this. Okay, here's All my right, let, pitch. Let I me... can also end blindness with this pool. But my pitch, I'm just, I'm just gonna throw it out here. So we'll cards real, on the table because I was just kind of holding on to the plan. But right now they've been throwing all their orbs into what. Rick could tell looks like a bag of holding because it's not his sack isn't bulging. I have dispel magic to try to dispel the bag of holding. Now, at which that, point those orbs would be gone. That is under also the assumption that it would work through the sphere that they have. Well, in this particular case, if everyone's getting blind, I would be running right up to his face to cast it. Also, under the assumption you could get in. At fair, and if. You would, know. But that's. Uh... I would like to let everyone know that I'm actually down. <laughs> He's like, one way or another, I'm down. <laughs> I, I, go, I personally go, go down with if I, don't, if I can't turn that into half. I don't so, think Bag of but... Holding's a spell, more a magical effect. If I'm eating it, I am down. And that's okay, I'll take it. Is it. I do have my inspiration I'm willing to spend for someone. If someone feels has a higher con save than I do. I have a plus eight. Con save? Mm-hmm. Decisions. Make them now. You give it to me? What is happening? Uh, go ahead and take, take my inspiration. 18. So it would be what? A five. And not blind. Yeah. It would be 25 damage you take. Then I am hurt, but I am up. Okay. And I at least, I'm at least, I at least have. Okay. I'm so it, down, but I have them next to me. Uh, that's fine. We're just trying to mitigate damage here. So you're, you're safe. We're going to move good. you off to the side. So the question is, keep Nim up and try to go for the healing and line removal, or I keep me up and I'll try to do I, my plan. I think it's better to keep Nim up because at this point I'm also down. Okay, I'm, I'm willing to take the majority on it. So the the bigger pool of healing at this All point, right. the better. Nim, take the plus two. Okay. Yeah, or those heels, though. I'm so sad. Bardic inspiration's not a reaction. Mm-hmm. I, I think you're still sitting on my bardic inspiration, uh, Rudy Tootie. Oh no, I used it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you're gonna hear Mirsky cry out in just cursing that. nearly unintelligible at this point. Um, Rudy, what are you doing on your turn? I... Uh, what is the... Like, what's happening now? I mean, are they all... The, how are the elementals doing? They're blinded and they're just like kind of what you would assume would almost be holding their faces. Yeah. They all just got just as blasted. And Mirsky's still up. She's like crippling on the ground. Okay. Um and in the corner there is a uh, I mean I'm dead, but how are the other cultists inside that sphere looking? Unbothered. Okay. 
Son of a bitch. All right. Uh, cool, 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 cool. I have a thing exactly for this because I have a wooden sword and it's really neat. Uh, I'm gonna go see Mr. Charlemagne as I basically drop down, uh, and I don't take fall damage as long as my wings are operable. I mean, what? Um, and uh, place a sword on Rick, and I knight him. And say, rise, for thou art no longer dead. Um, and you can take three hit points. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. No, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Um... Great. Yeah, that's 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 my turn. So Okay. Rick. <laughs> uh, thanks, dear lad. I always appreciate a good nighting. Uh, well I might not got much gas left in the tank. We're gonna do what we can. Uh, I'm going to Click the right thing to move. I'm gonna. I'm moving to the barrier to see if I can move past it. I need a charisma save. <gasps> oh. And as a bonus action, I'm going to also just go ahead and give myself bardic inspiration. Actually, can I give it to myself? I don't think. No, nope, other than me. No, other than me. Never mind. Uh, but in case I go down, I'll just give Bardic Inspiration to uh, Nyx. Nim. Nim. It's like, oh, that was the wrong character. Yeah. Uh, that was someone else. That was someone else. I was else. like, I've... Nim, Nim, I've uh, got a character named Nyx. <laughs> um, Christmas save. You got it. Okay. <sighs> That's a 12, unless anybody has inspiration. They use it on puppies. <laughs> does does um, Flail still have inspiration? No, they use it on themselves and they're on the ground with okay. the orb. Um, You try to go through this and your hand just hits solid wall. Okay. Uh, if I... I'll probably have to try that again next turn. So I guess at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and try to heal myself. Uh, so I'm going to use Cure Wound, and I'm going to boost that up to a second level spell. And I'll heal for five or fifteen. Sorry. Okay. The air elemental. Will kind of flail and end up smacking the water elemental. <gasps> Um, dealing 18 damage. Um, Puck. Okay, time to make death saving throws. <laughs> oh my god. Question. Yeah. What was the rule on getting a natural 20 for death saving throws? You are conscious with 1 HP. <gasps> cool. Is that my whole turn? That is your turn. Okay. Well, I am. Or not? You know what? No. That because it's at the start of your turn. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check normally. You have your whole. You have your turn. Nito. All right. I'm gonna roll to see if I get my breath weapon. That's, <laughs> oh, that's a five. I get my breath weapon. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wake up. <laughs> for my up. action, I'm going to disengage. Okay. And move around to. Here, I should have enough movement. Let me double check that. Dude. Yeah. So I would be you, to there. You don't have to disengage. They're blind. Oh, okay. So then I won't disengage. I'll move around to here. 
Um, blinded by the light. I'm gonna need all the <laughs> elementals to make a strength saving throw for me. Ew. Mm -hmm. uh, air got a 12. Air got a 10. Water got a 14. And the Felidar got an 8. Anybody who rolled under 18 is going to be pushed 15 feet away from me. How many? Uh, anybody who rolled under an 18. I didn't no, hear how many feet? Rolls. 15 feet. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to use my action, because that was my bonus action. To let me make sure this is an action. Jesus, productive kip up. Yep. Um. So, question. Sure. Can I use something that is a bonus action as an action? What is it? Second wind. Sure. Cool. I'm gonna pop that and then take one d10 of healing. Uh, I think this is a d10. Yes, it is. I will take six more health. So I am up to a full seven HP. That is my turn. Oh, plus six, actually. So that's six more. Yeah. Six plus six. All right. So Mirsky, Mirsky, like, holds her eyes just, like, screaming in pain. Uh, her staff is on the ground. Um, and she, like, she can't. She can't see. She stared Before into the sun. at the moment. <laughs> um, the elemental um, feeling being pushed and everything is going to kind of also flail around. Just keep them over there. <laughs> um, it won't hit the Felidar at all. Um, or the air elemental. Same with the fire. Do, 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 do. Nope. Um. This guy you're gonna see kind of come out of the dome and kind of make a break for the orb as he dashes. Uh, do I get an attack of opportunity on that? Uh, no, he wouldn't have come close enough. No, I was just asking because the pathing you took was right next to me. Because you went... Yeah, because... Yeah, you went to, like, that tile and that's yeah. an attack of opportunity. Right? He, he would he would do what he could not to be Question. right up on your booty. Does Ooh. Fetterline and the Water Elementals... <laughs> no, blind. because they are blind. Okay, fair enough. Um, but that is his entire turn. Um, Flail has to make a death save. This dude's gonna be in a world of pain next Which turn. Which I guess, saying. right? Let's roll out in the. Ooh. Well, that's not great. Is it not plus con? Plus what? Is, are death saves just like a simple, simple 50 50 roll? They are a straight d20. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um. The Felidar is going to lash out. Feel something trying to hit it. Does that hit? That'll hit. Um, it's gonna take out the water elemental unknowingly. Nim. Oh lord. Okay. Um, things got weird. Um. All right. I'm gonna remeasure this to make sure. Yeah. Like absolutely sure. But this is 30 feet. Alright. 30. Okay. We'll move over here. 
It's as far oh, as I oh can no. go. Um, ha, ha, I, I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna make this request. Don't heal me. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, I need to stay low HP for max damage. <laughs> uh, no, you're you're totally fine. Um, uh, I see that this cultist is going your flail. I don't like that. Um, so I'm gonna throw another grappling trap. At you this son cultist. of a bitch. I need a deck save. You. Oh god, he got a ten. All right, so that <laughs> failed. What the fuck? He's fr- grappled and has to spend his action trying to get out. Hey, look, there's even a little net. Oh, I love that. Because, yeah, it's, it's just nets. So now I have two nets active right now. I gotta mark that down. So I can only okay. have a certain amount of traps active. Uh, as um, he's like running towards Flair, going to like grab the orb, you catch him in a net, and he's just like, ah, you bastard. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is all I can do this turn. Okay. The Earth Elemental. Um, he will just like kind of swing around Rick. You just like can kind of like back off a little bit as his like giant arm just like goes and swings out. You'll feel like pebbles hit your feet. Um, the ram. The ram and ram. Okay. I'm taking the orb. Okay. I uh, eat the orb. Yep. I um, vortex wrap myself. Warp. And I'm going. I'm gonna cry. I'm going. I'm going. I'm leaving. Okay. I'm, I scream. Let's go. Um, and as a I think that is I'm a little bit further down. I just can't go down to the map, but yeah. Um, oh, my bad. I actually um, I would have looked to I would have went up first to Nim and been, been like, let's let's go. I would have touched you to face step you 30 feet down to give you a to give you a sprint boost because I can uh, as a spring eladrin I can I can uh, teleport somebody else instead of myself so I give you a <laughs> face step um, and then I teleport down. Okay, does that mean I can like use it immediately? Like where? If, where if am you I going? if you if you give in, I send you thirty feet closer to the 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 entrance. Oh, I okay. Like, I, I, is wait, I I gotta get flail, right? Was that the plan? Why not use it on flail? I I thought can you use it on someone who's down? I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah, they can't I'll, resist. Can, can that, get out of here. If not, I'll be like, oh, oh, oh I'll, I'll touch Flail. Okay, because I'm just like, I, I have to heal her. She put can't flail. get out. Uh, no, no, I, yeah, sure. Put Flail, yeah, like, uh, there-ish in line with, and then, and, I, and then I eat myself down. And then I'm, I'm actually, uh, I guess, out because I'm close. Okay, I'm yeah. And I say, get Flail, go. Rick. Uh, hi. Oh shit, God, I did it again. Or, uh, Rudy, Root, Atoot, He, Yaw, please. You, we can say Or, so I did. Yep. The scene Root, is gone too. Rudy, Tooty, Fresh and Fruity. I uh, ruined the immersion. No, 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 it's very good. Um, question The orb, where it at? Yes. Oh, uh, Moran's got it. Moran's got it. Okay, good. I just want to double check, make sure Moran had the orb. I am uh, out of the room. I'm out. Absolutely perfect. Go on, get out of here. Um, I upcast it, so mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, gosh, has has thing up in the corner that I can kind of see. Oh, it was ninety feet actually. I'm actually further further down. So who 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 me? Can I see it? What's it doing? Yeah. What are they There's doing? There's enough bioluminescence here. 
It seems to be like a full on dragon with fungal growths. And it seems to have been attacked with labored breathing. And it seems like incapable of like any real movement. Due to pain? Probably a myriad of things that you can't super tell when you are like 200 feet away. <sighs> well, I could change that using some fucking like, pot, pot noosel labor. I can blitz my way <laughs> over there. Okay, so I'm not really a Healy person. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go be a goddamn expeditioner. Uh, I fly up and down to get over that Earth Elemental. Okay. I can I can dash for 120 for flight, uh, and I just want to like get a look over and just see if this is like, you know, the vibe. They are. They appear badly wounded. Um, with several slash marks, but no blood. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, I'm just gonna hold up some 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 glass vials of healing. Okay, I'm about to be like, here, eat glass. No, no, <laughs> oh no, no, God, no, no. A chair might be a salad, um, and a, and glass in some cultures might be a dessert. He, but he looks at you, and you hear a voice without him actually speaking. Um, he tells you to keep keep away in a very um, shallow breath. But you're hurt. You, you are not safe near me right now. I'll still drop the healing potions on the ground then and just step a little bit back. He'll he'll nod in understanding what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. like he go <laughs> gods. Okay. Did you have anything else or sword? That's gonna be my full action and movement. Yeah, Rick. Can I attempt to push past the barrier again? Sure. That was gonna be a seventeen. That's nine. Uh, Again, uh, you you feel like you probably could, but it's a wall. How are the guys inside the dome reacting to everything that's going on right now? Um, they're looking to Pogra, who looks extra pissed that one of the orbs is gone. <laughs> um, Mischief. They got pranked. And they see you like trying to like push past the barrier and they're like kind of readying themselves in the event that you somehow do. Um, otherwise they're like ready to leave. They're ready to leave? Maybe. Demon at Christmas. I just want to get in there and destroy that bag of holding. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> we might just sell it for second place and just, you know, yeah. shit on, gonna... on their uh, corn puffs. Not strong enough. I'm going to move over here to Mirsky. Uh huh. Um, I want to do subduing damage. Okay. She doesn't have much left, so you subdue her. Okay. And I think that's pretty much my turn. Okay. Air Elemental is going to end up doing some damage to the Fire Elemental. <laughs> I love the chaos. As long as they don't combine. <laughs> Fire tornado, go. Um, 
Doing so, however, will dissipate the air elemental. Because fire. It evaporated Hi. itself. It is your turn. Okay. I've got a question for you, Tony. Yeah. Before I decide to do what I'm going to do. So on crit, what is doubled for damage? The damage dice associated with the attack. Okay, because this also deals an extra 1d6. Would that be doubled? What is it? It's voltage. The sword. Yeah, it would. Then further question, because uh -huh. I do an additional 3d4 for every melee attack. Does that get doubled? Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go up to this guy. I'm going to attack him twice. Okay. So the first one is a 23 to hit. Yep. It's going to do 11 plus 3 plus uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 11, 3, 9 for all the damage. You want to add those up. That's the first one. 23. Yep. Still alive? Yeah. Okay. Here's the second one. Uh-oh. A 12 to hit. That will not hit. Cool. I am going to use my action surge. Oh. Um, next attack, 24 to hit. That will hit for 16, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, for 28 damage. How would you like to describe that one? Oh, for that one, he definitely, after like the first cut across, he kind of weaves the second two, but then he just shifts right through them, kind of lifting him a bit as he does it. And then he's going to just quickly rip it out. Killing yeah. him. If he didn't die then, he was dying the next hit. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm gonna use the remainder of my movement since I've only moved five feet to go. I mean, she's dead, so I'm just gonna go to here. Now we're going aggressive. Okay. All right. Oh, before I end my turn. That's a three, so I don't get my breath weapon back. Going back. Um, flail. Needs a death save. Would anyone else like to roll it? Would they like me I've to roll I've been rolling it? so bad. Don't don't no. let me do it. Just you, roll you, you a 17. It. Okay. Okay. Good. She got a success. But I'm running over there soon, the I felt promise. Dog. Uh, that's gone. That's gone. What's his reach? Only five. He cannot reach anybody. Nim. All right, cool, 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 cool. I'm running up. Um, I'm going. Uh, that's okay. like 25 of my feet. Um, and I am just going to go ahead and give Flail like. 20 HP and then use five to cure the blindness. Okay. She's back up to just under half. Okay. It's like, oh man, what are you doing? I was with my ghost friends. <laughs> no. Alright, cool. Um, and then let's move five more. Okay. Yeah. That is Earth it. Of Earth, nope. Um, so, Hogril will beckon the others to him as he prepares something. Uh, actually, how close do they have to be for this one? No. You can see within range. Ten feet. Oh, you... Oh. Yep. <laughs> As... Yeah, we're... 
a second. Uh, Orsoid. Oh, okay. Um, I know the general plan is GTFO, so I'm a pretty strong strapping lad, and as such, I'm going to fly over here and offer a hand to 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 Rick here. Mm-hmm. And also, if it's okay, just grab our uh, subdued friend here by the scruff of her robes, and then uh, make sure give a uh, poggy poggy walky over here uh, a big. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I got your orb and your lady. Let's get the fuck out of here, Rick. That was a really good one-liner. I don't want him to hit me. <laughs> Damn. And if you can, t if you can take my hand, I can move a little bit further. Yeah, I got like. You taking my hand, Rick? Uh, no, I'll be okay. I just want to make sure Puck is good with whatever he's doing in case he needs backup. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, I'm, I'm heading over by by Nim, and I'm, I'm taking I'm taking yep. Shadow, Shadow Lass with me. I'm going to show her the meaning of speed. <laughs> I, but as I'm flying away, I just shout, Don't you die, old man! I don't plan to die here today. But okay. that's that's my go. I I go and I grab and I run and I'm like a like like a big man. But yeah, meow. Rick. Uh, I'm gonna delay my turn until after Puck. Okay, Puck. You are my me 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 Ted. The question: Will going through the barrier take an action? No. Cool. I'm gonna try to go through the barrier. It is a charisma saving throw. Mm -hmm. I got natural 20. All right. You will make it through the barrier. Mm -hmm. Feeling an odd sensation roll through you. Are you approaching Ogril? Let me roll this first and I'll tell you. Okay. No, because I got my breath weapon. Okay. So, because I'm going to in, hmm, how far are they apart? They're about 10 feet, both of them. Cool. So I'm going to spend it a PowerPoint, first things okay. first, uh, to double my range. Sure. I'm going to need all three of these guys to make a strength saving throw. Uh, do, 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 do. Ogro rolled a 14. Crushing Wave got a 19. Black Earth got an 18. Um. Meets it, beats it, right? Correct. So Pogo gets pushed back 15 feet away from me. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to go up to the Eternal Flame Cultist. Sure. And because that was my bonus action. Um, this first one, I'm going to force a crit. We'll take a level of exhaustion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take 2d8 from a d8. That's a d10. Eight. Actually, you know what? I'll just gonna. Is there an option to force crits in D and D Beyond? There is. I feel like right click when you roll for damage. Uh... There we go. Roll. 
so that's 14, and then because it didn't double the fucking didn't do it right because it does it in. I'm just gonna roll damage twice because why not? Okay. It'll just be easier. So seven, five, and then twelve and four, and then add in the fucking. Two, two, so that's four, five, and I hold this again. For an additional 18 on top of that. Eh. Still alive? Barely. Well, cool, I'm gonna attack him again. Okay. For a 19 to hit. He is dead. Cool. I'll just roll the damage for fun. <laughs> and Again, this guy, he'll just take a slash there and then catch one in the neck and I'll rip it through. And as I do, I'll fling the blood onto Pogo. <laughs> and you'll see like part of this cultist body kind of starts to burn away. And because I still have movement, can I leave without making a saving throw? Yes. Cool. I'll use, because I was here, so I've used 12 does, feet of movement. Does so, the fire elemental go with him gone? Nope. And then I'll move back out and leave. So now it's Rick's turn. Well, if we're going to do a hit and run before we go. <laughs> oh my god. Like Everybody one of the cultists run, with we me. <laughs> uh, Five foot step of movement. I'm gonna try. I had plus six to this. God damn it! <laughs> there we go. Seventeen. A seventeen. That will just make it. I'm just taking a extra five feet of movement in there. And now that I, because I saw the breath weapon work in there, so I know magic works within the sphere. Breath weapon is a magic. Well, if he's going to cast a spell in here, it's going to have to work. So we're going to cast the Dispel Magic. Um, um, if I can target his Bag of Holding, I'm going to target that. It's not an ongoing so, spell. Can I, you give me... Do you have an Arcana proficiency? I'm half proficient in everything. But are you proficient in Arcana? No. Give me an Arcana check anyway, then. Before you cast the spell. <sighs> that was going to be a 19. Well, for, does anybody have inspiration? No, we haven't had inspiration for a okay. long while. It's just worth double checking. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? <laughs> Two. Two, like a two. Yeah. Total. And, and yeah. Like it, it, it rolled under the nineteen and then moved to the one. Okay. You cast the spell, and as much as Pogoro's eyes change color. You're not sure if anything happens with his bag. But you also see a shimmer around him kind of shatter and break and disappear. I don't know, guys. Should I should I back out or should I try to <laughs> Yes, back out. <laughs> I just hate I, them. I am leaving, just so you know. I know, I know. I'm He's just trying. like, his shield is gone. I could get there. I could try to attack the bag of holding. See, you've already used your action, though. So. Yeah, that's fair. All right. We'll have to dance another day. Let's see. And then I get to there. Okay. You will see the other cultists move up to him. 
and do you speak abyssal puck i don't okay he's gonna utter something that you don't quite understand if i if i hear it i can repeat it um good for me later <laughs> i am and... an actor after all <laughs> <laughs> and he will let his spell go and these three won't be here anymore uh, just before they disappear Puck will raise voltage up and point right at him and go the lady will have your head and he will like roll his eyes like thinking like who, who the fuck are you um who the fuck is the lady? <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? When, He's one of them. You don't understand. It. When Pogarill leaves, these three. Why is it not? Oh, that's why. These three will pop, pop, pop. I'm pretty sure I would have checked the angle to see, and I'm pretty sure I'd come back like, okay, it's got done. And that shimmering shield or dome rather is gone. Nothing happens to the orb. It's with me. Correct. Well, we have one. We survived. Rick's Rick's gonna move over to the statue, putting his back to it as he sits down, catching his breath. I... Uh, if only I was 10 years younger. We need to stop meeting them in the situations. We're not strong enough. We never are. We should organize a real meet cute kind of thing. We know a few cafes nearby. Not now. Oh, all right. I'll schedule it in for maybe a week from now. Sure. Um, how did they leave? Uh, they, he said something... Uh... Or something like Bratru Nikto. <laughs> if, if you think he's able to recite it, I would know what the person would have said in Abyssal. Um, are you able to recite particulars so, of things you don't understand? My my feat of actor allows me to basically like mimic the speech of another person or sounds that they can make. You know, as long as I've heard them. Give I'm going to assume check. since I just heard this guy say it, I could potentially repeat it back. Yeah, enough. give me um, I, with be, I will say, give me a performance check, and I'll lower the DC because of your feet. These rolls today, twelve. <laughs> twelve. Um, from what you can gather, um, Moran, from what. Uh well, actually, let me ask you. It does give me advantage on deception and performance checks when trying to pass myself off as a different person. Could I get a, apply the advantage to that? Since I'm trying to basically mimic him, it's like, it said blah, 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 blah. Um, you're not going to need it. Okay. <laughs> um, with what he can repeat and what you can yell, he said something along the lines of... Um, puts a kink in the plan but we got what we need repeat that out loud well as long as they're stalled that's a win um, for us or so do you notice that all of your potions have been drank <sighs> yes. and the uh the vials are sitting neatly so um, you see uh, this just gargantuan dragon who seems to have spores all around him question would uh, Puck, due to family and or lineage know who this dragon is no okay uh, if uh, someone could we need to bind and gag our guest here um while they're all doing all that stuff i'm drawing all the stuff 
the giant sigil on the ground, everything. Okay. Mm. So this dragon in the will look to you. Um, thank you for the vials. Oh, don't mention it. As long as you're feeling better. Are you feeling better? S slightly, but it will take time. Ah, well. And... We can wait, I guess. Until such a time, you should still keep your distance. All right. Well, uh, you with the Enclave? No, not in that sense. Well, the well is. It... All right, that we were here? I mean, what happened? My name is Mycelian, the Everlasting. And I guarded this place. An agreement between those who followed you and the monastery in exchange for home and protection. Well, that didn't really work out, did it? And these people just came in and started doing ritual things and hurting you. They attacked without warning. They massacred my offspring. They said they needed something from me from what I could gather, but after slashing at me I believe they understood that they could not get what they wanted without endangering themselves. The spores around me infect and infest. I have control to an extent. When I am grievously wounded, I have less control. My friend here is a bit of an expert when it comes to healing, but we're not allowed to get close to you here. If they were to inhale my spores, they could ins accidentally become essentially me. Part of me. Oh, well, I was going to say, Captain, you, you're all big and grown. That's pretty handy. It is a preservation defense mechanism. It is why I have gained the title The Everlasting. Yeah, well earned. It's a good title. I'll have to get my own title someday. Makes it sound much cooler. Just Orsoid. I mean, what? Orsoid? Hmm? Where? You have a, you have a title. Uh, Sure. What was, what was the term you were using, cowboy? I'm a cowboy. That's because I uh, only heard about this orsoid. Quite a fellow, I heard. Mm -hmm. Stunning eyes. Able to see for miles. Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, Rick Flail Moran, you guys having your, your fun Mirsky friend, um, you notice that on her robes are these designs. And this is her stick. Oh, I need that. Yes. 
easy. <laughs> yeah, fucking stop trolling. Um, Mycelian um, will continue with uh, I do not know where you came from to get here with what this one has given me I should be fine with the fact that they have left were there any other acolytes none that we found we didn't, yeah, we didn't find any it was like the place just stopped I'm sorry that these people have done this to you and you're a bone. I, we're trying to find answers. We will find answers. You only need to apologize for something that is your fault. What were they trying to take? And he'll kind of look over to the statues. They took them. The orbs. I know, but you said they were trying to get something from you. What was that? I am uncertain. It could be my power, my essence. The first few of them that attacked me fell easily to my spores. After that, they used what they needed to subdue me and left me to as what they think is to rot but they misunderstand my abilities I hold the shadow orb we have one so, better than none I suppose oh good you hold on to that oh that's a good grab what it be safe with you or do you think it'd be okay if we took it I do not know I need time to recover and there is no one else here it sounds like to defend the monastery we'll be in good hands we'll make sure they come and attack us instead of you and we're quite ferocious do you know what these the history of these from what I remember, from what I was told long ago, these are orbs of the plains. Powerful items that allow access to other planes of existence. We have a shadow pill orb. As long as I can't summon any more race, I'm happy. <laughs> this is my orb. <laughs> Plane of fire, plane of earth, and a water, Shadowfell. What was the celestial then? The it was a light orb. I know, but what plane is that? Or the celestial orb. The celestial plane. Oh, is it? Okay. Where the shadow one is probably the shadow plane. We should probably get the orb back to the hideout and Tess and all that <laughs> going on there. And make sure we get that. She a hostage or Oh my gosh, if they want all the... Oh, they there's going to be some plainer fuckery around here. Oh, language. Oh, now that they have access to the other planes. It's, so, I think we better go and uh, get this back where it might be safe. Could <laughs> can we come back and talk to you? And you're feeling better. If you need. I right, if I just I... want to. <laughs> I cannot forcibly stop you from coming back. Alright. It doesn't sound like you want me to show up, but I'll knock first. Again, it is for your safety that I keep you at reach. We yeah, don't have to shake hands or anything. We'll figure it out, I'm sure. This is scary. This is scary. Oh my gosh. Second question. Because there's two more statues. Did those two not have orbs? No. The they... 
I do not know if they are for the purpose of you know, you'll kind of see him like almost shrug um, keeping this place bound or hidden or but for as long as I have stood guard here they have never held power detect detect magic on those opposite ones that have no orbs um you're not so aside from like the faint magic that kind of sits around the the circle um you're not getting anything else okay i was gonna say it's either gonna be nothing or you're gonna get smacked like you're walking through a bright room um, but just because you know for sake of time if there's any writing on those statues i write it down i don't you know, just just in case yeah no you're not finding any writing but um they just seem to be and they're here. identical to the other statues essentially they are all identical See, I wonder. Hmm. They were definitely trying to bring something. They had just summoned the other elemental creatures. Something was coming. Um, my ceiling will try to stand up, kind of buckling at first, and then getting getting his a second wind. Um, excuse me. This he kind of looks sea orsoid. Mm. Ah, sorry, yeah. Step over by him. And he'll just kind of slowly walk through. Um, as he kind of comes to the center, he just kind of gets a full look around. What is your plan with her? And he'll kind of like pick up the, the limp body of the other cultist. Um, Hopefully we can sustainably detain her and perhaps get a few answers. Did the the air cultist just it was still there, right? Their corpse is still there? They're like way over here, but yeah. That's like we can luckily Rick can speak to the dead. Well, mm -hmm. if the if those ones will answer my questions, truthfully I'll I don't know. He also, kinda go ahead. sets the, the body down. There is another option. Go on. I could consume them. Would My... you gain the knowledge they have? Over time. It would take a while. Absorbing them is one thing absorbing their knowledge and understanding it as another. Uh, not for nothing. As far as the corpse goes, you, you can do as you wish. But I'm not sure how comfortable I feel giving a person who's still alive over for a consumption. Um, it, Puck I thought she was dead. is going to pick her up by the scruff and just throw her over to the dragon that are you sure it guarantees the information any other way she could lie to us it's not a guarantee this is and we don't have the option of doing things nicely right now i mean don't we i look away i don't watch i don't watch the person get eaten he is not going to do it in front of you I understand your concerns, Puck, but, uh, you know, if we take such actions, are we any better than the cultists themselves? That's for history to decide. Uh, I don't know history. I don't really trust that opinion. Um, as you will know, Rick, being an Enclave member, has its moral gray lines as we are sworn to protect the realms and do whatever is Puck needed, even as much as we may hate to do certain things. I'm kind of with Rick on this one. Eaton's one thing, but why don't we at least try? I mean, can you guarantee? 
Can you guarantee we'll get information out of him on time? Yeah. This is a guarantee of whatever information we get is going to be truthful and accurate. And you may not like it, and I'm not asking you to like it, but this is the best path forward. Not the right path, though. Well, you can put the decision solely on me. No. Wash your hands of it. <laughs> What are the rest of you? I recite the end of the Emerald Enclave like oath, which is, you know, ours is a garden of life and death, and we tend to its mighty stream. Sometimes that means protecting life, and sometimes that means dealing death. We have chosen this because we know that we are capable of both and wise enough to know when to nurture and when to, um, and I go on and go on and go on, but essentially it is we know that we must do what needs to get done, even though we may not always like what needs to happen. We have to make tough decisions, and I would rather we don't have the luxury of time to begin with. What about you, Master Nim? Nick? This has been quietly thinking about this while everyone else has discussed. Um, he's been thinking about the destruction as was kind of left in the wake of all of the cultists going through here. Um, they didn't see the two creatures that didn't make it. Um, if they if they aren't going to show mercy to things that are completely innocent, I don't know if I can really trust that they'll do it now. Very well then. Seems like the group is in favor of this action. While I don't agree with it, I won't force you to take the blame to yourself. All that we do, we do together as a team. So, Mycelian, we offer this, this last to you in the hopes that through her death and the knowledge gained, we may save others. I understand your moral decisions on this matter. As I said, it will take time to absorb and decipher. I... You will have to find contacts within your organization to return here. I will keep my offspring from leaving to ensure that they do not accidentally cause damage. Very After well. that, contacts can be made, and we can take time to share information. This is a win. If anything, it's a win for today. Let's go back. Okay. Question: Do the two mushroom gods follow me out of the monastery? Um, they, in a, they start to kind of, um, until like Mycelian will eventually kind of go back to his lair. Okay. Which was that large, cavernous area where you found the uh, mm -hmm. raptors, and hearing him come back, they kind of, you are now nobody to them. Um, okay, that's that is totally like, fine. I was just making sure that it's like okay, you were just can they, can they all like sustainably stay here and be okay? That that was um, the... Mycelian will tell you that it is yeah. too dangerous for them to leave. That's that's entirely fair. 
unlike him, they may not produce spores, but they can produce offspring of their own with enough organic material. As such, if they were to, say, get into the nearby woods, they could cause a population explosion. Gonna be tribbles. Tribbles. We don't want no. We, we don't want invasive species. Makers of tribbles. No. Yeah, and this is why he keeps them here. Mm -hmm. um, if cool. there's a there are points where sometimes he may have to cannibalize, but it is for the safety of the plane. That's a severe spanking of one's kids, if I ever heard of it. Oh my god. I do not do it with satisfaction. Nor do I do it before they are or I do not do it after they are developed. They are nothing more than growing fungus. We'll head back to the sanctuary. Yep. We would do. Just want to make sure with this. Um, as you kind of go back up, and you go back out, you touch the large stone on the ritual circle which you arrived, which takes you back to Vaughn. Um, he'll just kind of give you a smile. As you know, Baker he has Tuesday. nothing to he has nothing to offer you, nothing to trade, nothing to speak of. And a glowing portal would go to the north, and he kind of looks over and sees it, and he'll just give another smile. As he just kind of sits there and like lazily, you know, kicks a f his feet off of the uh, the stone that he sits on. And you will arrive back at the sanctuary. But Tess isn't here. Not yet. You will more than likely have to wait for their return to give them a debriefing. Reginald, pour me a stiff one. No, like, not his head. And that was the end of the night's session. They went a little longer than expected, but thank you everyone for sticking it out. Um, you can catch more Emerald Expeditions next month, uh, July 18th, I believe. Um, I want to thank everybody again. If you like the maps from this evening, you, uh, you can find them on Kispaku, who's on Patreon. The Mushroom Dragons were created as part of a really cool art challenge of Smogus by Xavier Colette found as at Coliandre on Twitter. Um, if you like the fungal dragon, that was made by Miss Cabreas or Irene Cabreas Martinez on Instagram via at Irene Cabreas. Um, and of course, more lovely magic item by Griffin Saddlebag, also on Patreon. Finally, more cool music by Music D20, also on Patreon. They do some cool shit. Uh, I've been Tony, Dungeon Master. I got stuff, but we're not going to go over that. We're going to go to the players, starting with Rick Charlemagne. Hi, everyone. Copper Leo. I played Rick Charlemagne, Gentleman Adventure. Uh, really, that's all I got today. <laughs> Please. I don't know how they overlay when anymore. Oh, yeah, no, it's still yeah. me. Uh, all right. Okay, hey, everybody. I am Turk or Turk Accented. I was playing... Uh, Rudy McToot, Rudy Rudatoot Hia, also known as Orsoid. Uh, and uh, if you want to see more of me and stuff I do, uh, you can find me this coming Sunday over on uh, Lost Caravan RPG, where I'll be playing Lancer when Corruption Bump Thin. It's a really fun uh, series there. And of course, uh, Tuesday, uh, the 28th, Tuesday, we'll be back in Dylea over here on TPK. With uh, Oathsworn, obviously the Dragon Lords, uh, which is a uh, epic 
heroism style D&D &D mixed with Greek mythology in a wonderful little ball of awesomeness that I would die for. Um, a bunch more cool stuff coming up, but one thing I do have to give a quick shout out to is on July 4th, which is not only Independence Day, but is also uh, Alice in Wonderland Day. Um, I will be hosting a, I'll be DMing a uh, session of Call of Cthulhu over on Lost Caravan with uh, some familiar faces. So make sure you go check that out if you have a chance uh, before you watch some explosions go up, watch some uh, people have their minds blown. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all so much. And of course, uh, the bundle for Buffalo is still ongoing. Uh, this... it, it actually ended during the spring. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Well, sorry. No, you're good. I no. just gotta thank everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Of course, Apple. Apple speak that more. But uh, if you haven't got a chance, uh, go and educate yourself about the world. Go do good, because doing bad is for dummies uh, and uneducated people. And y'all, y'all ain't uneducated anymore. Um, so that's me. Talk over Jeff. Hey guys, Dev Phillips. Thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, thank you, DM, for a great session. Until next time. Hey, it's uh, Mr. Rogers. I play the Puck, our Half Dragon Warrior. I really don't have any of those throats, so I'll just move it on to Heck. Hey, everybody. It's me, Sir Heckalette. You know, um, I mean, I, I played Nim for Lantisil, the uh, Sea Elf Zoologist. I'm trying to be fast. Um, I only have two other things this week. Um, this coming Thursday is my uh, monthly episode of Dungeons and Discussions, a podcast that I co host with Tang's Dungeon. We talk all the indie stuff. Um, and this month we're joined by someone on the screen, our very own Turk. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look. Um, on Saturday, uh, you can find me over on the Hype Goblin channel playing Numenera. We're gonna be on our third episode. We have a whole like Archive 81 vibe. I'm totally about it. Don't miss it. Um, and then of course, uh, this coming week, you can see me um, pretty much all throughout module week, just here, um, as well as uh, on Wednesday of next week, you can find me on Lost Caravan, uh, GMing my own D&D 5e thing um, about uh, the suits of cards in different kingdoms. It's going to be very cool. Um, but that is it. Taking it on over to Tony. Hey, it's me. Um, I'm just super tired. Um, thanks again, everybody. Um, again, check us out if you want to see the next episode in a month or, you know, whatever. It's cool if you don't want to. <laughs> um, but as always, keep it funky fresh and know that I have forgotten the last three sessions to give out cool little snippets that were also things, but I am just one person and I said. So thanks. Love you. Goodbye forever. Until next time. Goodbye.